Thanks a bunch for tuning in. Tonight is February 15th, 2013. It is the 32nd episode of the MMA Podcast, and we're ready to break stuff down with you. We got Darren Crookshank on at the beginning of the show. Really excited to have him back on. He was on our first episode. Uh, we got a bunch to talk about after Crookshank comes on as well. Um, a bunch of news, a lot of fight announcements actually, including a blockbuster heavyweight card at UFC 160 that we'll break down a little bit into the podcast. Of course, we got our 10 solid seconds of sports, some good news. UFC on Fuel 7 is this Saturday, tomorrow afternoon in the UK. It's a thick card, looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, let's get into it, man. Listening to the MMA podcast with Jake and Chris. <laughs> Thanks much for tuning in once again. The day after Valentine's Day, um, we we love the shit out of you, listeners. Uh, thank you for getting us on iTunes and YouTube. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and click those little buttons for us. Big shout out to our uh, buddies over in the UK, MMA Mental. I say it every week, but Ray and Patrick are doing some crazy things. They get like 10 interviews an episode. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'll uh, shout out the Twitter and the phone after this this interview real quick. Uh, we're, we got to call Darren Crookshank up literally in about a minute and a half here. Um, listen to the show, obviously, every Friday, 9 to 11 Eastern, 6 to 8 Pacific. Um, Chris is over off the east coast of Iceland training beluga whales. We got Ramsey sent from word on the street. What's up, man? Not a damn thing. How are you doing, man? Thanks for having me on here, uh, co-hosting for Chris. God bless his soul. God bless his little beautiful soul. Um, yeah, I would chat a little bit more with you, but we got a, uh, a uh, little interview to get into, um, yeah. but yeah, the MMA Roundtable, you can find both of us and MMA Mental, uh, that's every Thursday from 7 to 9 Eastern, 4 to 6 Pacific, but uh, yeah, without any further ado, let me uh, dig up Mr. Crookshank's number, pop it in the little Skype machine here, and uh, away we go, let's call it Mr. Uh, Darren Crookshank, the Detroit superstar, see how he's he's holding in there. Should be ringing in a second here. There we go. He's a busy man. He is training up for his fight, UFC 158 against John McDessey. The mailbox belonging to... Uh oh. Darren Crookshank, the champ. <laughs> the champ, son. Uh oops, I guess I uh I guess I ended that call for both of us. Let me get Ramsey's back on the line here. Um yeah, I like that uh, voicemail. Darren Crookshank, the champ. The champ, huh? The self proclaimed. The champ. champ. The freaking champ. Yo, we'll uh try and call him back in a couple of minutes here. I guess that uh gives us a hot second here to uh just uh, BS before we get into to the interview in MMA. Um, you um, you ran ran into a little busyness at work, which is totally understandable for the roundtable. We always have, you know, between four and six people. So whenever someone misses it, just the fact we have so many people, uh, we're able to keep on ticking. We had a fun time with Mike Hammersmith from MMA Valor. But um, yeah, how was your uh, Valentine's Day, bro? Uh, yeah, it was pretty good. Um, you know, I just, uh, ordered a lady, uh, a date. My Valentine came straight off of Craigslist, the Austin Craigslist. You know, it starts off with a massage. One thing leads to another. Before you know it, you're cutting deals right then and there. And you got yourself a Valentine. And it was a hell of a night. Uh, we watched UFC 119. We watched James Tony versus Randy Couture. Uh, we both got a kickoff uh, out of that. It was a good night, man. V- Valentine's, man. You, you can... You don't need love, man. You just, you just need some money and the will and the internet. Yeah. 
Yeah, for 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 sure. Nothing like uh, nothing like watching some UFC with uh, some internet hookers. I need to I need to dial that that up soon. That that I, I'm 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 actually not not even speaking out of sarcasm at all. That actually sounds really fucking cool. Yeah, man. Uh, oh, Darren just uh, texted me asking if I just called. Yeah, should I call back? Is gonna be my response, and I'm gonna read it out while I type it because I'm a monkey and I can't talk and type at the same time. Uh, you, you we should, got a little. Type, <laughs> you should type. Should I call back, champ? <laughs> <laughs> champ. Uh, oh, we uh, got got a little Twitter action from AMS Twitter, Mister Kiki One. He said they just hung up on Ramses, and then there's yeah. a little box, and I'm assuming it's a sad face. But it was only temporary. Don't uh, worry. I was actually trying to end the call with Darren, and I uh, just ended the entire Skype call. But hey, Ramsey was 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 gone for maybe eight or nine seconds, and uh, the show did get get tremendously worse without him. But uh, you know what? He is uh, back doing a little still action. Still undefeated. Still undefeated. Still undisputed. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So yeah, I. Uh, I had a pretty low, low key uh, Valentine's Day as well. I, oh, did you just, did you have a date? What happened, man? What's the truth? I just did did the uh, family thing, you know. I uh, okay, that's... I uh, did it up. Yeah, not not uh, really anything too uh, too in depth, especially with me being in St. Pete and uh, technically being homeless, living with my uh, grandparents. It's it makes it's, it a little hard. Yeah, yeah it m- makes it a little hard. You know, it's. It's definitely awesome seeing them, but at the same same time, I'm very much looking forward to uh, having my own place once again. Hopefully, which doesn't have horrible internet like my place in Chicago did. Um, down I to guess Austin, pretty solid to, over here, man. Dude, it's um, my uh, cousin's actually moving over there. She's uh, getting married. This is awesome pod, by the way. <laughs> um, let me try and people call care, up. man. People care about us. <laughs> let. Me, let me uh, try and call up Mr. Crookshank one more time. Let's see if he answers. All right. <clears throat> champ. The champ. Darren is a UFC lightweight fighter, 155 pounds. Hello? Hello? Darren Crookshank, the champ. What's up, buddy? How's it going? Good, good. Yeah, we're on the air now. Um, yo, thank you so much for uh, coming on again. You actually were uh, one of two guests who came on our first episode, uh, so we hold hold you uh, near and dear. This is our 32nd episode now. We've had a bunch of people on from Annick, Schiavello, Lieben, McCall, Tate, but uh, you and John John Albert uh, will will hold a uh, special place in our hearts for being on that uh, first episode. How's, how's your uh, day going, man? Uh, well, uh, I'm honored to, uh, to you know, be on the first episode, and now this is the 32nd, so you guys must be doing some good things and keeping the show running. Uh, as far as me, I just got out of training, and I'm actually uh, parked at the gas station so we can do this interview because I, I drive a 1979 Bronco, and it is super loud. So uh, <laughs> that way, you know, you can hear me and I can hear you. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, you're uh, also the uh, first guest we've had on twice, so you're uh, breaking records every time. Yeah, my uh, buddy had, I think, like a 76 Firebird, and yeah, you could not have a phone conversation in in uh, that. So I uh, guess if you're waiting around, I'll get straight to it. Um, obviously, your last win against uh, Hen- Henry Martinez made made your stock explode in the lightweight division, but it was actually kind of crazy. You all were originally slated to fight at that infamous UFC 151 card, and then the fight got pushed back a couple months. Uh, take us through that, that, that whole clusterfuck that was UFC 151 and having it be canceled and everyone being upset at John Jones. I'm sure that was wild. Well, I actually found out a buddy of mine that is a hardcore... MMA fan, doesn't train or anything, gave me a call. I actually just got done getting, like, my last massage. I'm headed home. I, like, leave the, the next day or two. You know, my training is has peaked already, and I'm not training hard anymore, and I'm kind of calming down, you know, and uh, I'm on my way home from this from the, from the massage, and my buddy calls me. He's like, hey, uh, you know you're not fighting? I'm like, what? 
how how am I not fighting? He's like, yeah, I seen seen uh, online that you know they're dropping the card, and I'm like, dang, I I haven't even gotten a call yet, <laughs> you know, by anybody, and uh, that's basically how it happened. And I mean, it it sucks because you know you spend time. I went out to your favors. I you know I paid for that, and and uh, you know you 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 invest money in yourself to get ready for fights. And you know I'm still at the bottom of of the barrel. As far as you know, I'm I'm only I'm not making a ton of money. So the money that I do make, I've invested right back into myself. So that that uh you know getting ready for that fight for UFC 151, uh it, it sucked. But you know UFC takes care of their guys and uh, they hooked me up with uh you know a check to make sure that you know I was comfortable and I could get ready for it again. Uh, UFC uh five on Fox and. You know, they, they take care of the guys. So I was comfortable and, you know, they, uh, they supported me. So, and I, uh, put on a good show. So I'm pretty sure they're happy about it. Yeah, you uh, put put on a hell of a show. I want to talk about about that in one second, but uh, you know, thanks thanks to our partnership with the Word on the Street podcast, we have a pretty big con- constituency of Chael Sonnen fans. Um, do do you hold any ill will against John Jones for uh, not taking that that fight against Chael Sonnen on eight days' notice? You know, here's the thing. You know, Chael's not in that weight class. He doesn't really deserve the the shot. I mean, he's a he's an awesome entertainer, and that's what he is. Uh, but he doesn't necessarily. I don't believe that he he is deserved of a title shot yet. Uh, you know, I mean, he's a stud wrestler. He he's gonna do well against them, but I think that he should have to go out and win some fights first. Uh, not saying anything bad about him. He's you know one of the the best uh, guys in the UFC right now. Uh, but you know, I I feel like. You got you got to you got to earn it a little bit, uh, you know. He, but he sells himself really well. That's uh, that's how he gets these fights. You know, if I could learn anything from him, it would be you know to to sell yourself, to make an image for yourself, and and get you know get your name out there for that reason. Uh, but as far as am I mad at John Jones? No, definitely not. He's the champ. He's trying to do his legacy. You know, he's trying to make a legacy, and you know. Changing a fight that short notice against a guy that doesn't necessarily deserve the matchup, uh, I completely agree with him. You know, and I don't think that they should have destroyed the entire card, but you know that's not my choice, uh, and I was okay with whatever you know the UFC decides to do. You know, they're they're the boss, they're the the best company to fight for, and I'm just happy to be in the UFC. Definitely. So uh, the the fight against Hen- Henry Martinez rescheduled, I believe, from October to December eighth. That UFC on Fox Henderson Diaz card in Seattle. Um, I was actually watching it with our co our uh, co host Chris, who's actually taking a break now. Um, you and he tweet all all the time, so I'm sure you're uh, f- familiar with him. But uh, we were watching it, talking on Skype, and we both went absolutely crazy when when that kick landed. Um, I actually re rewatched the fight today and almost for uh, f- forgot a little bit about how vicious you were through the first and second round with all of those kicks. Uh, you know, it was it was a uh, barrage, really sort of a, a testament to to Henry the uh, the the assault he uh, took and you know staying in the uh, game. Kind of take us through that that uh, fight, you know. From from uh, round one, obviously, to round two, when uh, you ended that that fight with that uh, decapitation of a head kick knockout. <laughs> you know, I I really felt that you know Henry wanted to put me on my back, and and that's where he wanted to get me there. He didn't want to stay on my, on the feet with me, but every time he tried getting in close, I was cutting him up with elbows and and knees and things like that. And he did get on the leg a few times, but he. He didn't finish the takedown. He, you know, he tried to put me on the cage, and and I feel like I have, I, you know, I wrestled for a long time, and I've got good hits and you know balance and things like that, and and you know my wrestling ability stopped his takedown, and I, you know, I stayed where I wanted to be on my feet, and you know that. So my game plan was, you know, I wanted to go in there and knock him out, put on a show for the fans, and being that he is he is that tough. And he could take the punishment, 
that led up to a great show for the fans. I mean, there was a couple times in the, in the first round where I felt like, you know, any other person or, or another person I would have been done. You know, I was very surprised at how tough he was and how he was able to come back at me every single time until, you know, the lights actually went out. Um, so you got to give, you got to give him Martinez some credit. Yeah, yeah, and uh, he he really, really took a, a lot of damage, but um, obviously, even though you somehow didn't win knockout of the night, um, I almost wanted to start a Kickstarter fund just because you really deserve that uh, cash, but, you know, there 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 was a media circus. I was even watching Sports Center. I was like, what? Crookshanks number three on the Sports Center top ten? It was uh, really crazy. I'm uh, sure sure it was a uh, media circus. How uh, long long did it take for all of that uh, craziness to die down after that knockout? You know, it's it's kind of funny because I am up and coming and, and things like that. And Michigan, you know, the only people that really recognized me before was like the hardcore fans. And now when I go to like you know Walmart or Myers or wherever you know out to B Dubs. Every time, you know, someone stops me and says, hey, are you uh, that guy who's on SportsCenter, da, da, da? So it's, uh, it's kind of nice, you know, to, to know that, like, people are starting to recognize me and things like that. And, you know, I, when, I do see these, when I do see people that, that are fans and stuff, I always try to take pictures with them or their kids. Or, and it just makes me feel good, like, you know, all my hard work is paying off and, and things like that. And, you know, I, I love it. You hear the train? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ramses, you uh, there, man? Yes, I am. How are you doing, Darren? It's an honor to be speaking how's, with you. I'm Ramses. Um, uh, just, how's it going? Great, man. Great, great. Now that I'm talking to you, uh, just had a couple quick questions for you about the the knockout, kind of related. Um, I saw you like I remember where I was when when you almost caved in Henry Martinez's skull because it was my birthday, man. That was a great knockout. <laughs> Um, I was just wondering, honestly, because you would know, why is it that some fighters in the UFC just don't have knockout power like you? Like, for example, Gray Maynard, he, he he's a great fighter, but he can't knock anyone out to save his mama's life. Like, what is he doing wrong, or is there a secret to power striking? What's the deal? As, as far as power and knocking someone out, you know, there's a, everybody's got a button, um, and I, I believe you just got to stay relaxed. You know, when I, even when I'm training... If I, like, you know, get mad at somebody and I'm like, and I'm trying to knock them out, it just doesn't happen, you know. But it's when I just, like, throw something fast, whop, and then, oh, crap, dude, you okay? You know, you just got to stay relaxed, and when, when, you, when, you, when you're relaxed, everything snaps, everything's, you know, uh, nice and fluid, and that's just, you know, you just got to just calm down a little bit. Yeah, and how many, have you ever, like, knocked somebody out in training or a fight? And then thought, holy shit, this guy might be dead. Like, have you ever thought somebody, because I saw that Uriah Hall knockout on Tough, on the Ultimate Fighter. I don't know if you saw that. It was pretty scary. You ever, I'm sure you've had a few of those. Did you ever think someone was actually dead? Uh, dead? No. I, bet, I mean, <laughs> I've, hit, I've hit guys, and they've had to get, like, surgeries and stuff like that. But, you know, thankfully, I haven't killed anybody. Um, it kind of seems like I have to, so I can get, so I can get a bonus <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know hopefully no- nothing like that ever happened yeah so like let's say that like when you throw a kick like relaxed you know let's say the one that you knocked henry martinez out with was like an eight on your power scale like do you think you could hit like a 10 or 11 and actually like probably kill like the average ufc fan you know i, I feel like like i can always have more power and i was always taught like if i smoke somebody with something hard you know, a lot of people, you know, say they can take a punch, and it almost, like, uh, mentally messes with people if, if you give them as hard as you can, and then they keep coming forward. Well, I was taught if I give them something hard and they keep coming forward, then that's a challenge to me to give them something even harder the next shot. So that's, that's how I, you know, I hit Henry with a bunch of hard stuff that he should have went down with, but he didn't. So I just had to relax and, and let another one go. Yeah, and that that reminds me. Um, about two years ago, you fought Mike Ritchie, and I believe he took it, he took it. You guys went the distance. It was for the ringside lightweight title, but you won by a unanimous decision. Uh, now you're both in the you and Mikey Ritchie are both in the UFC now, and he's moving down to your weight class. 
So would you be down for a rematch if he called you out? And like, how hard of a fight was it the first time around? You know, the, the Mike Ritchie fight was uh, probably one of my m- most fun fights I had because it was, you know, I was earlier in my career and I got to show a little of my skill because it went 25 minutes. It wasn't, yeah. you know, a three three rounder. It wasn't something that got stopped in the first round. It was twenty five minutes of basically kickboxing because in the first, uh, you know, a couple minutes he he kept trying to take me down stuff like that after I hit him, and then you know throughout the fight it was basically me chasing him around, mm-hmm. uh, and every time we engaged I hit him with a bunch of kicks and then he would try to take me down and just uh, it just didn't work out. You know, I, he did get a couple of takedowns but I got right back up. Um, and in that fight, I just got to show off a lot of my skill that I wasn't able to in my prior fights. So you think a rematch with him would be fun then? In yeah, the sure. Show me the money. Hell yeah. I'd pay to watch it. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, you know, that's, a, that's a big motivator for me. You know, I got a lot of student loans I got to pay off and, and things like that. So uh, the more fights that I get, the better for me. And, you know, as long as uh, I can fight, I'll definitely do it. Yeah, you did get you did sorry you did get robbed of the uh, knockout of the night bonus, but it was by my hero, the Thug Jitsu Master Eve Edwards. So if that's any consolation, at least it was a good guy that kind of robbed you of it. But you did deserve it. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it was a great knockout, but I was basically told that uh, you know it, my fight I was supposed to knock him out. I mean, uh, there's always a chance that he would win, but it, in my eyes, I was supposed to knock him out. And in the in the Eve Edwards fight. Both of them, had a, they're both been fighting in the UFC for a long time. They've both never been knocked out. And that was basically, you know, it was a higher caliber fight, and that's why Eve got the uh, the knockout of the night. Yeah. Definitely, you know, definitely. And, and I, I'm, not, I'm not, you know, mad or anything about it. You know, the UFC takes care of their guys, and I'm just happy to to be in the UFC. You know, that's it's where I want to be, and, and, uh, and I always have more fights, and... And more opportunities to get those bonuses. Word. For sure, yeah, you're uh, talking about student loans. I know all about that that game for sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, you uh, knock out Henry, um, and about a month later, early January, it's announced that you're uh, going up against the Canadian John McDessie, March 16th at UFC 158 in Montreal. Um, what... What kind of was your your first reaction? Had had you heard of John Mc, McDessie? Um, you know, what was your uh, reaction when you found out that would be your opponent? You know, I really didn't know who he was until they gave me his name, and I, you know, I looked him up a little bit, seeing a little bit on his on his style or whatever you would say, and uh, and when I got the text message to you know of his name and stuff, uh, it also said, "Hey, this could be fight of the night bonus." This is one of the ones that would run up for Friday night bonus, and I said, "Yep, let's do it." Yeah, for for sure. Um, yeah, you're uh, going to be be going to Mo- Montreal to fight a Canadian on his home turf. Uh, you've already done it three times, and you are three and zero. One of those being that fight against Ricci we uh, talked about before. Um, but obviously none of those three crowds are going to be as wild as a UFC crowd in Montreal. You have any ap- um, apprehensions of uh, going in and, you know, being a huge, huge, um, uh, I don't know what the uh, word is. You're, you're not going to be the crowd, crowd favorite there is what I'm getting at. <laughs> well, actually, I, I love it. I, it, uh, it excites me to come in. You know, uh, you know being a UFC fighter and being at that stage, it's just like being in, like, the professional wrestling. You know, there's always a good guy. There's always a bad guy. Both roles have to be played. In this fight, I'll be the bad guy. I've done it a couple times, like you said. And, uh, you know, I, I always do well at it. So I, I welcome it. You know, it, uh, I, you know it's, I'm good at it. So let's do it up. Um, and the good thing is, is all those fights that I had, you know, in the middle of the fight or after the fight, when I was going out there, I was being booed. And when I won, I was being cheered. And that's what I look forward to, to, to turning the fans that are against me into fans that are for me. For sure, yeah. And, um, you know, these uh, fans, I'm uh, sure after seeing your uh, style, will 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 be fans of the Detroit superstar after this fight. 
Um, John, the uh, guy, guy you're fighting, John McDessey, he's 10-2, uh, and two, most of his wins by a knockout, coming off a win against uh, Sam Stout at UFC 154 via decision. Um, are, are, are you training just like normal for, uh, for this fight, or are you uh, making any changes uh, seeing that John's more of a stand-up guy and he's probably more uh, dangerous on his feet to knock you out than he is necessarily, you know, a ground guy. He's not uh, probably not going to be as likely to tap you as he is to uh, try and finish the fight with strikes. Here's the thing. I don't really worry about what the guy that I'm fighting is good at. You know, that's, that's awesome that they're good at that. But, you know, I basically just concentrate on myself, make sure – that I that I'm ready, my cardio's ready, my hands are good, you know, everything's working in sync with each other. And as long as is is that's that you know, that's what I'm worried about, everything's gonna come out anyway. You know, I train for it all. It's mixed martial arts. You gotta train to be good on your feet. You gotta train for the takedown. You gotta train to to off your back and, and on the wall and everything's like everything like that. There's no specialty that, that I'm training for. You know, because once I hit somebody, no matter if they're a grappler or not, they're probably going to try to take me down. You know, so you got to be ready for it, for anything. For sure, yeah. Um, you know, you're uh, up in Michigan now, um, I'm assuming. Are are you doing one, 100% of your training in Michigan, or uh, what's what's going on with, with your uh, training camp currently? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm not going anywhere this time. This is... Uh, you know, everything's in Michigan. Uh, if it's not broke, don't fix it. You know, I uh, I got my support system here, and I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, we uh, spoke with, with you last coming off that uh, tough season. Um, uh, you were on Team team Faber. Do do you uh, still follow up with, with team, team Alpha Male and, and plan on training over there in the future? Or? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I actually went out there. Uh, before my last fight and trained with those guys, I actually have one of my, one of my guys out there right now that, that, uh, is training with Team Alpha Male. It's, a, there's a good relationship there. I, I can, you know, I, I'm, I got pretty close with Uriah and all those guys, uh, when I was on the, in the house with them. And, you know, there, there will be, always be a friendship there. Ramses? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, Darren, uh, I had a question come in from uh, Twitter for you. Um, it was from Yao the First. Yao the First. Uh, he, he wants to know, um, well, it was kind of a comment, but he wants to know, why not just call out Benson Henderson for the championship when you win at UFC 158? That's his question. I guess on top of that, are, why aren't you, are you the type of guy that will call people out, or what's your plan here to, do you even care about the title? No. On my to-do list before I die, I would like to have a UFC world title. You know, that's uh, that's on my future board that, at home that I made. Um, but, you know, I learned early in my career. I fought for a couple of world titles, you know, uh, earlier, uh, King of Cage and G-Force and then Ringside. And then I felt like, you know, I was ready to go. I was undefeated. Let's do this, da 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 and, and, you know, my... My, actually, my father said, you know, you don't have the, the, enough experience for that yet. And, uh, you know, I should have listened to him and things like that. But, you know, I was gun ho and let's do it up. I'm going to get this title, da da da. Uh, I feel like, you know, eventually I will be USC world title caliber. But, you know, I'm still just a baby in the sport. You know, I got to go through a couple guys and climb that ladder in the USC, you know, uh, to deserve a title shot. And that'll come. But, you know, not not immediate, not right now. I'm, you know, I'm very uh, thankful for being where I'm at now, and I do, I am hungry, and I do plan on being there someday. But you know, step by step. Yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta bust a few heads first. I understand, and you will, and I'll be betting mm-hmm. on you every time. Actually, I actually, uh, I actually predicted on the MMA podcast that you were going to defeat Henry Martinez with a zombie uh, head kick that decapitated him. Um, <laughs> Another question that I have, uh, I follow you on Twitter, um, and yesterday was Valentine's Day, and you tweeted a picture of you and your cat hanging out. So, so what's up, man? Did you strike out or something? You're, the, you're in the UFC, and you should be surrounded by crazy-ass hoes. So what's the deal here? What's the word on the street? <laughs> well, I mean, I did, I did go out to dinner with, uh, with somebody, but, uh, yeah. you know, um, I try to keep, you know, I try to keep the personal life uh, personal. You know, um, I, I am on Twitter, uh, Road. 
but um, you know, I I don't I'm not I'm not running around. You know, I I have things to concentrate on. You know, and uh, and that that kind of stuff will get me in trouble. Okay, all right. So as long as you weren't alone, then that's good to hear. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah. My cat's always uh, at in, at home. Awesome. For sure, yeah. We had uh, we had Tom uh, Tom Lawler on just a couple of month, uh, months ago and said a big part of his training camp is uh, practicing grappling with his cat. Um, I, I think it was like Sergeant Wafflestein or Sergeant Whiskerton, something like like that. Um, do do you ever practice b- uh, BJJ with your cat? No, I actually like to do a lot of like uh, I, I do like you know kettlebell stuff with him. Like I hold him. I hold his belly up, I do, you know, presses and swings and things like that. My cat, I don't know if you've seen a picture, but he's a fat cat. I mean, he's like 30 pounds or something like that. So, uh, you know, I uh, I get my workout in. Oh, so you uh, probably wouldn't want to put your uh, cat up against a grappling match against Tom Lawler's cat? I don't know, because uh, my, my cat beats the crap out of my roommate's uh, pit bull. Uh, so I think he'd be okay. True, true. Yo, yo, Darren. Um, we had you on our first episode, and and we kind of started a uh, tradition with you and John. And we asked every guest we we had on what their flavor favorite flavor of ice cream was. And you're you're the first guy to come on twice, so we had to cook up a second question. So, uh, Darren, this is this is way more important uh, than 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 uh, the ice cream question. But um, okay. Darren Crookshank. Would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, man. Uh, well, I would, uh, I, do I get a weapon or something? <laughs> um, you can use... The left and the right, how about the, that? The, uh, yeah, the old left and the right. <laughs> We saw okay, you kick well, that man's uh, head. I, you know, I think I could kick a hundred times. Uh, you know, a little chi- is it chicken or duck? Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's yeah. do yeah, ducks. Let's do a hundred duck sized horses. And, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw a hundred different kicks. Actually, let's go. <laughs> I'll throw ninety nine round kicks and then a jump spin hook kick to take out the last. Yes, <laughs> to take out the last duck sized horse while the horse sized duck stays at home without getting decapitated. By a Crookshank yeah. KO. Yo, thank you so much for uh, coming on. I'm looking forward to that fight against John. Um, that's uh, going to be March 16th, UFC 158 in Montreal. Darren Crookshank is Crookshank155 on Twitter. C R U I C K S H A N K 155. You have any plugs, man? No, I just uh, just want to thank everybody uh, on Facebook and Twitter that are listening and everybody out there that are listening for the support. And and uh, the motivation for me, and uh, you know, hopefully you guys are all watching me at UFC 158. Yeah, we're uh, really looking forward to it, and and looking forward to having you back on after you uh, take care of Mister M- McDessie up in Montreal. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, take it easy, buddy. Thanks for coming on. See you. Yep. No problem. All right. Later. And that was uh, Mr. Darren Crookshank. That was a fun, fun interview. You uh, gotta love when when people actually put a lot of thought into those final questions. Um, I would, I would pay. You know, like Dana wants us to pay sixty dollars for a pay per view. I would pay sixty dollars to watch Darren Crookshank fight off a hundred duck sized horses, mainly just for that last uh, final KO after those ninety nine round kicks. It'd be fucking awesome, man. Those horses would be exploding, like, with each kick. Just exploded horse shit everywhere. Darren was awesome, man. Um, straight out of, what, where was he calling from? Detroit, home of RoboCop. What a badass. That was, that was a great interview. Home of RoboCop, yo. Let me uh, end this Skype call and open it back up so we can open up the phones. Hold on one second. Um, if, if, if you want to call in, um, you uh, can call in or tweet us. Uh, the phone number to call into the show, it's 213-457-3380, or you could tweet us at the MMA Podcast. If you're on Skype and you want to save me a couple a couple cents, uh, the Skype name is the MMA Podcast. So whichever way you want to get in contact with us, uh, we really do enjoy chatting with you guys. 
And, uh, yeah, I uh, guess you are ready to get to the news, homie? Let's do it, man. Let's do it, son. And um, I guess we'll uh, start off the uh, news. We uh, spoke a little bit about it on the MMA Roundtable. I uh, have, have yet to hear hear your opinion on it. No, at least lately you've been pretty outspoken about Vitor Belfort, so I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say. Um, UFC on FX8, it was announced yesterday. It's going to be Vitor Belfort versus Luke Rockhold. It's going to be April 18th in Brazil. Um, you know, I, 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 I really don't know which way to, uh, lean, you know, Belfort's obviously the really skilled boxer, Rockhold's got a very multifaceted game. I'm almost leaning toward Belfort just because you look at both guys' resume, and Belfort has literally fought the who's who of mixed martial arts, while Rockhold's fought, uh, Jacare, Tim Kennedy, and a bunch of scrubs, pretty much. Uh, what do you think about that fight? Oh, man. Vitor Belfort, it's time to get the clown out, Dana and Lorenzo. Um, He did the John Jones fight. He did the elbow. That's great. It's all good. Whatever his name is, Vitor Armstrong, it's time to get the clown out. Get the clown out. Rockhold can do that, I believe, and I think he will. Um, I'm not putting too much credit in Vitor, man. Uh, Sooner or later, it's it's looking like he's going to overjuice pretty soon here. He's approaching a meltdown. He's going crazy. If you've even paid attention to his interviews, like leading up to his fights when he's all juiced up, Vitor's out of his mind. He's losing all control. Uh, he's going to break down, and it's going to happen in the octagon. Uh, Rockhold ain't going to put up with his shit. He's just going to straight up punch him, punch him, uh, knee him, kick him. Vitor's going down. Damn, yeah. Um, you know, I... I don't know if we really talked about about this specifically, but you were talking about get the clown out, uh, talking about Vitor, obviously alluding to the statements Vitor made about Chael Sonnen. Uh, Sonnen um, obviously not uh, making a good impression with Vitor, and Vitor saying get the clown out. Um, what what did you uh, think about Bel- uh, Belfort randomly calling out Chael after... Uh, defeating, oh my god, uh, yeah, um, I almost blanked on his name, Michael Bisping. You know, he's not in his division now. It seems kind of bizarre. Um, apparently, he really wants that fight. Stylistically, I don't know why he would want that that fight. You know, he's proven to not be necessarily the best suited to fight American wrestlers who can just take you down and grind you out. Um, yeah, what what motivated him? What, you know, what is going on with, with uh, him being mad with Chael? Um, well, he's just crazy. That's the problem. When you, when you put that much juice, that much junk into your body, it does affect your mind. Um, instead of roid rage, he just has like some sort of like the passion of Vitor, like, uh, just sweeping over him. Um, he, he's obsessed. J- just, it, it doesn't make any sense what he says. He wants to fight John Jones when, when John Jones beat him literally with one hand. Um, beat that man senseless and what submitted him with, with one working arm? Come on, Vitor. And uh, yeah, he's stepping up to Chael, but then he apparently wasn't stepping up to Chael. Uh, that just goes to show you he's not even thinking about what he's saying when he's saying this, this garbage, man. Um, is it obvious that, that I don't like Vitor, uh, but by now? I mean, I mean, th- this guy's done though. He's, he's headed for a crash here. Wait, there, you don't like him? You don't like him? It's breaking news, man, right here on the MMA Jesus podcast. Jesus Christ. Vitor I, Belfort. Damn. Go fuck himself. That's right, Belfort. Oh, shit. Um, well, uh, yeah, you know, hey, another thing about Vitor, which I wanted to talk about real quick, he's going to be fighting Rockhold at UFC on FX8. He's he- headlining back-to-back UFC on FX cards. Uh, Belfort Bisbing was UFC on FX7, and it came out that somebody failed a drug test on that card. Uh, everyone thought it was Vitor, but it turned out to be Tiago Tavares. I don't necessarily want to talk about Tavares that much, who did get a nine-month suspension. Uh, but Vitor Belfort was positive for, for TRT. Uh, you know, a lot of things swirling around. It's really interesting. You know, you had Nate Marquardt about a year and a half ago get kicked out of the UFC for elevated levels of testosterone. And when that came out, everyone's like, what the hell does that mean? What? Testosterone replacement therapy, huh? What? And it's 
that was the thing that really kicked it off, and it has snowballed since, and that snowball is getting bigger and bigger. You have a lot of big-name fighters using it, including both fighters we're talking about in Chael Sonnen and, and Vitor Belfort. Um, a, a lot of people have voiced their thoughts on it. Keith Kaiser has said he doesn't think people who have tested positive for PEDs in the past should be able to take uh, testosterone uh, replacement therapy. Vitor obviously did test for PEDs in the past, does use TRT. Uh, Dana White, I think, actually today said in a press statement that he is 100% against TRT therapy. Uh, which that will probably play a big role going forward. Um, you know, what uh, do do you uh, think about people? You know, I I uh, know one of your favorite fighters and now one of your least favorite fighters, Vitor and Chael, both use TRT, so I'm sure you have con- conflicting thoughts on it. Uh, what are your thoughts about TRT and all that craziness? There's nothing conflicting about Vitor Belfort going to fuck himself, all right? Now, um, on the subject that we're speaking of, however, Chael Sonnen, he uh, legitimately appears to uh, have a, a medical exemption that is actually, you know, um, it's it's not apparently bullshit on its face. You know, uh, Vitor's is. I mean, you know, he's got popped, like you said, he got popped for it before. Uh, and that, and uh, the commission's right, that shouldn't be, if you've been popped for it illegally before, uh, if, you, you know, you shouldn't you shouldn't be allowed an exemption afterwards um now uh do, do but in in the long run though i just gotta be honest here everyone's gonna be on the juice eventually it's like most of the fighters man i'd guess 80 percent of the fighters in the ufc are juicing somehow taking shit to enhance their bodies um i just say i, I would say let the juice loose that's always my bottom line but um but i think if you are on the trt your opponent should know about it. Your opponent has the right to know who who he's fighting and what their, you know, what what their levels are. If they have some sort of medical exemption, you know, they, yeah, it's a, it's a little skirting the lines of privacy. But if you're a fighter, you know, some of that shit goes out the window. Um, so yeah, TRT, uh, I think it's here to stay. I don't care what Dana White says. Um, you're not going to get rid of the juice. Yeah, you know, you know, it's it's. It's tough because it's it's gonna need to get pushed to to one extreme or or or, or the other. It's kind of been straddling the gray line, the middle line for a while, but it's just really hard to straddle that that line. And on both sides, I see the argument for it. You know, yes, you have people taking TRT and people frown upon it. What about things like ACL repairs? That you know, if you tore an ACL. 15, 20 years ago, your career is over. Should, you know, is, is, is the fact that knees can now be rebuilt, uh, you know, a, a advantage now, an unfair advantage? What about Tommy John surgery? The same exact thing for pitchers in baseball. Their elbow is literally replaced by a cadaver elbow, pretty much. And they're good, good to go. You know, it's, it's, it's a question of where you draw the line. I'm not exactly sure TRT is that heinous enough. You know, it isn't like, yeah, you you should be be frowned upon if you and your teammate are are you know putting syringes in each other's asses with with anabolic steroids and I'm juicing up. But if you do it in a medical setting and you are proven to have low testosterone, whether it be from a previous PED test, whether it be natural, I actually think people who've tested positive for PEDs in the past should be able to take TRT because I don't think a mistake, which I'm sure a lot of these older fighters who tested positive when they were young look at it as a mistake. I don't think that mistake should hinder them for the rest of their career, which it essentially does. So I'm leaning more on the pro side, even though I am more of an old timer when it comes to most sports stuff. But yeah, you know, it's uh, we're we're uh, really in a crucial time for TRT and everything. Um, and thank you from the tweet from Susanna G. Susanna one five one three, who listened yeah. to the uh, Crookshank interview, saying nice interview, guys. Cat questions, funny. Looking forward to UFC 158. Hashtag Detroit Superstar. We are too, Susanna. He is gonna whoop some Canadian ass. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, you have any more uh, thoughts on on the whole Vitor thing before we move on to more uh, PED related topics? Dana and Lorenzo, get the clown out. Word get on the street. The clown out. And if you don't subscribe to. Uh, 
the Word on the Street podcast channel, which I think is Cletus Damp Van on YouTube, and seen that uh, Vitor, that damn good Vitor impression. That shit is damn good. Go go and check it out. <laughs> um, you know, t- talking about PEDs, um, maybe you know it's uh, kind of su- uh, surprising. Maybe the one fighter linked most with PEDs now that Brock Lesnar is out of the UFC. Maybe other than Alistair Overeem. Uh, Chris Cyborg Santos, a woman coming off a year-long suspension. Um, I really don't understand what's going on with this whole Chris Cy- uh, Cyborg thing. There is no other place where she's going to touch the kind of money she could get in the UFC. You know, where where else is she going to get paid? Bellator in Invicta, maybe make. 20%, a quarter of what she'd make with the UFC. Anywhere else would pay her a tenth. Um, I, you know, there's a lot of money for this Rousey Cyborg fight to, to be made. And the fact that Cyborg, see, Cyborg has no cards in, like, she's shown all of her cards. She has no, no leverage after testing positive. And I just don't understand why her and her bonehead manager, Tito Ortiz, of all people, um, are wanting to take her out of the UFC. You know, Dana saying it's bizarre, getting doctor's notes. It's never happened before. You know, you can't drop weight. Just, I don't know. The UFC is apparently done with Chris Cyborg. Uh, do you ever think we're going to see her in the UFC? I'd have to say no, and guess what? Because I have some breaking news on the MMA podcast about the very topic we are discussing. Apparently, um, you know, uh, hats off. I have to say a special salute from me to Tito Ortiz, the greatest manager in the history of combat sports. All right. Uh, Chris Cyborg has withdrawn from the UFC, and just now they are announcing it's hitting the Twitterverse. Um, she's moved on to bigger and better things. Chris Cyborg, along with partnered with uh, Tito Ortiz Entertainment Incorporated, um, have signed with Invicta FC as of today. Chris Cyborg assigned really? with Invicta FC to the 145 pound division. And, you know, she, instead of, you know, instead of having some super fight with Ronda Rousey on pay per view for millions of people, uh, Cyborg is going to be fighting India G- Gom- Gomes, Gomez, G- G- Gomes at Invicta FC 5. I, I think it's pronounced can. Yeah, I- India, India. And Diet go well. It, it's instead of Ronda Rousey, Cyborg's going to be fighting. Uh, you know this big ass. Uh, you know this name here at Invicta FC five, April fifth. So there you have it, folks. I don't think we'll see a Cyborg in the UFC anytime soon. She just signed the deal of a lifetime. I see this nothing but good things ahead. Um, you know millions of people are going to tune into this fight with um in Daya Gomes. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. All you know, I'm. I do like like Invicta because they do put out good fights, and uh, you know that five dollar pay per view is something I like. But Cyborg, I don't know what 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 you're doing. Damn, I was actually going to ask: Do you think this whole move by Cyborg is just a ploy to eventually get in the UFC? But now that that she's signed, wow, breaking news for sure. Um, <coughs> so Chris Cyborg will fight at April uh, or on April fifth against India Gomez uh, in 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 Kansas City at Invicta. Kansas FC. City, how did they ever swing that? Tito, Tito, Holy shit, yeah, Tito making big moves. Uh, you know, I I I really think we're looking at the next Don King, Bob Arum. Oh. Yeah, this is. This is breaking stuff, but um, man, that's that is depressing. That you know, even though I I don't support Cyborg, I I I I dislike her because I dislike most people who test positive for performance enhancing drugs. But at the same time, she is a really great female fighter, and if she never fights Ronda Rousey, that's that's just going to be a sad thing. It's going to be Pacquiao Mayweather of women's MMA. Um, but I, I uh, guess, you know, moving along, Chris Cyborg, not going to be in the UFC. You have three women signing with the UFC this week. Misha Tate, friend of the show, Sarah McMahon, and Alexis Davis, all signing with the UFC, bringing their Bantamweight division to six. Uh, they obviously have Ronda Rousey and Liz Carmouche, and they also have Kat Zingano, who's going to be on MMA Mental, uh, in a hot few. Definitely check that out. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, other than Cyborg, out of those five current contenders in the UFC, you have the current contender, Carmouche, you have McMahon, who a lot of people are talking about, former Olympian like Rousey, Misha Tate, the only person to bring Rousey out, outside of the first minute, um, almost got to round two. Who do you think is Ronda Rousey's biggest threat for that, uh, Bantamweight belt? Oh, come on, man. Nobody, because they're not going to put her up against anybody that's a threat. That, that's my theory here. Um, Liz Carmouche, um, I've never seen her fight before. I don't know if you have. Uh, but, I mean, come on. We, we all know that, Jesus, there's no way in hell she's going to win, even if she can win. You, you know Dana and Lorenzo have already sat down with her and been like, look, here's, here's what's going to happen, Liz, all right? Uh, and then, you know, they tell her it's for the good of women's MMA. This is what happens in a smoky room back, back, backstage, you know. You, you guys don't know about this shit. What kind I, of I smoke? Can... What 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 uh, kind of smoke's lingering in those rooms? Cigar? Opium. No, these people opium. love opium. Yeah, man, they keep it real, real old Word school. on the street. Yep. Dana and Lorenzo are smoking opium and telling Liz Carmouche that she's got to throw this fight, all right? Uh, for the sake of women's MMA, all right? For the movement, you know? Like, they're telling her she's going to be the Susan B. Anthony of MMA, all right? Liz Carmouche. Um, uh, so, yeah, n- nobody's a threat to Ronda. You're not going to put her in the cage with anybody that's a threat to your, to your one and only female cash cow. Uh, no. Uh, just She's going to fight a bunch of cans. It's going to be absurd. But the, the good thing about women's MMA is that, you know, y- you're not going to run out of cans. That's all, that's all there are right now. I'm sorry. That's the way it is. Word on the street. Word on the street, but of those 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 five m- women, um, I, I guess if you don't think Rousey has any chance to win, which I don't think she has a, a very big big chance at all, but um, obviously the chances there a little bit. Of those five women, who do you think is the best? Tate McMahon, Davis, Zingano, or Carmouche? Uh, the uh, the girl that I ordered from Craigslist last night to be my Valentine, she actually looked like Misha Tate. I'm not uh... saying she was. Not saying she was, but um, you know, she, she fought back pretty good. I'll say that. So I'll go with Misha Tate. I'll go with Misha Tate too for uh, for different reasons, mainly just the fact that she was on our show. Um, you know, if you still have this uh, Misha Tate phone lookalike phone number, uh, definitely after the show we'll be needing to talk about that a little bit. I might need to be yeah, planning out a trip to uh, Austin, Texas soon. No doubt, no doubt, man. I got, I got your back, man. You know it. Yeah, you know, nothing like uh, good, good beef brisket and some uh, hookers who look like Misha Cupcake Tate. Um, and I, I guess we'll hit one, one more bit of news before we do the ten solid seconds of sports. Uh, the, the most unsettling bit of news, MMA combat related news I've seen in a long time. This really pisses the shit out of me, to be completely honest. The IOC dropping wrestling from the 2020 Olympic Games. It, along with seven or six or seven other sports, were uh, taken out of the games and put into a pool. They're going to do a vote, and one of the six or seven is going to be brought back from the dead and be in the games. Everyone thinks it's going to be baseball, though. Uh, wrestling's not getting very good chances. Wrestling has has been around since uh, you know the Olympics started back up in 1896. It's one of the core sports. Uh, it has a lot of historical relevance. And in my personal opinion, I mean, really, I've I've seen and observed a lot of sports. I've played a lot of sports. You know, everything from team sports, basketball, football, hockey, individual sports, running. Uh, you know, kayaking, rowing. There are a shitload of sports out there, and I truly think that wrestling breeds the hardest work, work ethic, and the strongest determination of every sport out there. I mean, I have friends who wrestled in high school, and they, you know, those those practices sound like just insanity. I mean, I had a friend who missed two days of school after wrestling practice just because it, uh, it jacked the um jacked the the people up so much oh shit 
Eddie Alvarez trying to get him him on the show. Get him on. Get dope. him on. Hell get yeah, him man. on to uh, talk uh, to talk about IOC. Yo, I want to hear your uh, thought on the IOC dropping wrestler wrestling, and I'm I'm uh, gonna bomb him too. Try and get him to come on and talk about this uh, little topic with us. Yeah, no kidding. Um, yeah, the uh, oh shit, man. Here's the thing with the whole wrestling thing. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm going to be totally honest. I have never watched an Olympic wrestling event on television in my entire life. Um, that being said, I do understand that it is an outrage that wrestling, like the oldest Olympic sport basically, is being removed from the Olympics. I understand the outrage, but I would feel like a total fucking hypocrite if I were to sit here and pretend like I was like – uh, upset and turned around by this when I had never even fucking bothered to watch it for myself. I did not support wrestling. A lot of people don't and didn't. And, you know, that's what happens. Um, you know, you see a great fucking popular sport, collegiate sport. It's in high schools, middle schools, elementary schools. You see it just all of a sudden just vanish off the Olympic radar. Eventually it'll vanish off the, off the school's radars. You know, that's just how it goes. Um, but, I'm hoping there is a positive in all of this in that, you know, if they get rid of wrestling, maybe maybe they'll consider incorporating it when they incorporate MMA, which I believe is going to happen, um, hopefully in our lifetime. But, um, yeah, hopefully it, it's a damn shame, but, you know, I'd feel like a hypocrite if I were acting upset about it because I wasn't there, man. I wasn't there. I didn't back it in the first place, so um, I'm not going to pretend like a, like I was doing it before it was cool. You know, I'd actually never watched wrestling until maybe a year ago. It was the Olympic trials, and I was in Gainesville, and um, man, I was I was stoned to the gills, and I was it was it was actually uh, it was you know not as exciting as mixed martial arts is all uh, you know obviously if you had an MMA crowd up in the stands they would be booing, but you see a lot of high high level wrestling techniques. Uh, stacking used a bunch and 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 I feel like I almost learned more about the ground game of MMA watching that very similar to watching a a a, a, a jujitsu match which the last time I t- I tried to tune into a strictly jujitsu match Nick Diaz didn't show up and everyone got blue balls but um yeah <laughs> that just was funny shit oh that was that was insane but you know. <laughs> Currently, you look at the champions in the UFC, and you you know, other than just freak Brazilian strikers like Anderson Silva, Jose Aldo, uh, Hinnan Barral, who who are the other champions? All wrestlers. You got Kane, Jones, Saint Pierre, Bendo, uh, Dom, Dominic Cruz, Sonnen, Demetrius Johnson. I love you throwing that in there. Um, just. All wrestlers wrestling is a huge part of mixed martial arts. You know, uh, Ray, Ray and Jay uh, were were on the round table last night talking about how wrestling isn't big in the UK at all, and wondering if it'll keep going. It it will. These these guys will be battling for the NCAA championship, and I don't see the NCAA dropping wrestling anytime soon because it's so big with a lot of these Pac-10 and big Big Ten programs. But um, it is just a goddamn shame. It is, you know, the the IOC. This is one of the most bizarre head head scratching stories I've seen in a long time. And the fact that the word corruption is being tossed in with it just really makes me sick to to my uh, stomach. And you know, chances are it won't be in the 2020 games, but hopefully down the road it's put back in the Olympics because you know it's it is as as you know it it. It seems as essential to the Olympics as running or swimming or you know anything like 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 that. It's a big part, you know. It's just uh, yeah, it's something that uh, really bugs me. Um, a lot of fight announcements we're gonna get to real quick, but uh, before we do that, you gonna do the ten solid seconds of sports where I chat sports for ten seconds, which as long as anyone wants to hear me babble on about it. I'll pretend I know what you're talking about for 10 seconds. All right, you pretend away for 10 seconds, and I'm going to start. <sighs> now, NBA All-Star Weekend draws near as the Lakers continue to gargle more balls than RuPaul. Freshman Kentucky star Nerlens Noel tears his ACL and is out for the season as Kentucky and North Carolina are both on the NCAA tourney bubble. AL East looks unbeatable as the hot seat. No boom. 
ka bam son uh you you knew the uh, kaboom was there that time um great you know, um there there were a few fight announcements but i want to start off with a little training announcement uh we know daniel cormier is going to be taking on frank mir uh in a couple of or i think that that fights in april um, but Mir is changing it up tremendously. He he, he has trained in uh, Las Vegas, where he's from, for all of his fights leading up to this, but uh, decided after his last fight, a loss against Junior Dos Santos, that he'd switch it up a little bit. And he's going to be going to Albuquerque, New Mexico, to train with uh, Greg Jackson. And Jackson's, uh, Jackson's over there with Jackson and Winklejohn. Um, you know... He's still, still going to be a big underdog against uh, Cormier, and when we talked about it on last night's roundtable, everyone agreed that this will help him, but he'll still lose to uh, Cormier, and I think that's the assumption here. You know, he's not going to be as good as Cormier, but he's going to be better than Mir and not at Jackson's. Uh, what do you think about Mir's uh, game, and what do you think he's uh, going to pick up over there training in New Mexico? Frank Mir is going to train with Greg Jackson, that's oh, that's unfortunate, man. The party's all over for Frank Mir. I gotta say, what what the fuck's he gonna try to do? Point fight Daniel Cormier? <laughs> Hell no, man. Uh, d- you know what? You know what DC is gonna do, man. He's gonna take him out like he was Christopher Dorner. All right, um, d- Frank Mir, dude, training with Greg Jackson. W- what? You can't run away from somebody like DC. It's gonna be all over for him. So I have to disagree with your with whatever the roundtable said yesterday. It's not going to benefit Frank Mir, all right? Uh, it, just like it didn't benefit Clay Guida, um, and um, you, you know it, it, what? You, you have to train to finish DC if you're going to fucking beat him, and that's not what Greg Jackson trains his fighters to do. So uh, yeah, uh, Frank Mir, I'm sorry, man, but that's a wrap, son. You're you're a dead man. You're a dead man walking. How uh, how how do you see Cormier beating Mir in that fight? Oh shit. Um that's it's you know, it's fifty fifty. It's either gonna be the left or the right. Um shit. I'll go with a I'll go with you know what? I'll call it right now. The last punch that ends it is gonna be a right hook. A right hook. Call on the right hook in the first round or No, no, definitely not the first round. Uh shit. Might be Damn. How's Cormier's cardio? Not sure. You're, you're putting the squeeze on me here, so I'll go round two right in the middle. Round two right in the middle, and that will be on UFC's 420 card, uh, UFC on Fox 7. It's going to be a pretty dope card. you got Bendo versus Melendez, Mir versus Cormier, Nate Diaz versus Josh Thompson. It almost seems seems like a Strike Force reunion card. you got Thompson, Cormier, Melendez, uh, who else? Uh, you got brother of Nick. You got Nate Diaz on there fighting Josh Thompson. Uh, yeah. I don't think Thompson stands a chance. You got Hardy <laughs> versus Brown. We were talking about that fight with our boy Wes a little bit last week. Um, I don't see. Oh, jo- uh, Jorge Masvidal, Anthony Njikawani, Lorenz Larkin, Roger Bowling. Jesus Christ, this is a Strike Force reunion card if I've ever seen one. But. Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Now I see why. Because it's in San Jose, home of Strike Force. Now it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, that's uh, going to be an awesome card. You can't hate on a UFC 420 card. Um, yeah. A couple weeks before that, though, we're uh, going to see Gustafson versus Gegard Mousasi. We know about this fight, but Dana White has come out saying that uh, uh, the Mauler is going to get a title shot if he beats Gegard at that April 6 card. I, I think that's in Sweden. Um, does he deserve it? I don't think so. I, uh, think, you know, the, uh, winner of Henderson, uh, Machida deserves it much more than Gustafson. Henderson was supposed to get the title shot. Um, uh, Machida, obviously, you know, back at UFC on Fox 4, um, all, was almost given the, uh, title shot. So, I don't know. It's just, uh... I'm 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 not really sure if you know this is the third uh, guy that um, after Dan uh, Dan Henderson and Leoto Machida who's been promised the title shot and not lost since and not gotten it. Um, I don't really know about uh, him being promised the winner of Jones versus Sonnen. Yeah, um, 
Well, shit. I mean, Gustafson, let's face it, it's inevitable. Sooner or later, he is going to get the title shot. So it might as well be, might as well just tell him he's going to get it right now uh, while he's still fresh, still, uh, you know, not really, uh, you know, he's not in his prime. He's not going to be stuck in a rut like uh, Johnny Hendricks where he's kicked so much ass but not getting the title shot. Right off the bat, they're recognizing they're moving this kid up. Um, I think with good reason. He does. I think he'll he'll put up a good fight against any one of the champions. Um, you know he'll put up a good fight against Chell um, or Ron Jones if that happens. Excuse me, John Jones for the sake Ron of MMA Jones. podcast. Yes, um, I think he'll put up a good fight, but I don't think he could defeat either one of them for the title. So, but but I think it'll make for a damn good pay per view at least. Uh, so yeah, uh, well, damn, uh, putting Gustafson on a pay per view like poster that's gonna be a tough one to sell there i gotta say shit i hadn't even thought about that um yeah maybe if he changes his name or something he needs to change his name uh word on the street uh, but yeah he deserves it he needs to start wearing nazi uniforms and turn himself in into like a super villain like a it, heel and, yeah yeah and call like darren his... like darren what crookshank was saying that he he's looking forward to being a heel in canada he's turning a heel for sure, for sure. I I wonder if it's legal to change your name to Adolf Hitler. I'm gonna look into that. Um, but uh, yeah, and and uh, talking about it, you know, first if he is gonna get this this title shot, Gustafson's got to get by uh, the smooth kickboxer Gegard Mousasi. Does Gegard have any sort of shot against Gustafson? No, I gotta say I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fake it. I saw uh, I saw Mousasi's last fight. He looked impressive. Other than that, I have never seen him fight or remember any one of his fights, so I don't really know too much about him. Um, but I know that he's kind of—he's an older guy there. He's, isn't he kind of like approaching veteran status here? So uh, I got to give it to Gustafson, man. He's—he's he's on a—he's on fire right now, man. He's—he's just—he's just a—he's just, uh, he's just on a roll, and it's not going to be the Mauler that's going to stop him. Yeah. Um. Uh, you know, uh, Gegard is one of these guys who has a lot of fights under his belt. He's 33 and 3, uh, but he's only 27 years old, believe it or not. Damn. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, uh, one of these guys fought, fought at Pride Bushido against guy. He beat, uh, he beat H- Hector Lombard at Pride Bushido 13. Um, you know, Cat, the, uh, Cat fought Melvin Manhoof and Jock Array in back-to-back fights, both in the first round in about two two minutes. If that says anything about about you know the uh, kind of fighter he is, he's he's well rounded enough to literally in the same night at Dream Dream Six. It was the uh, Dream Middleweight Grand Prix in '08. Um, he uh, defeated Melvin Manhoof and Jacques Array back to back in the semis and and the uh, final. He he beat uh, Manhoof by submission. And Jacare by by KO both about a minute or or sorry uh, a, a minute and a half and two two minutes in that I mean God, if that doesn't speak to the uh, kind of tools he he has to beat beat anybody I mean you know the <clears throat> the guy did lose to uh, King King Mo by unanimous decision at Strike Force Nashville if he hadn't lost that fight. I think we would be talking about a title shot for a gay guard. I mean, l- literally before that loss to King Mo, his last loss was to Akihiro Gono in 2006. Since that one loss, he's gone 20 and one. His last two fights against Ovin St. Pru and Mike Kyle uh, defeated Mike Kyle by first round submission. I think a lot of guys are sleeping on gay guard. Um, I was I was actually shocked when I found out when I, you were like who I was like dude but but at at the same time you know at least recently I I can see why you hadn't you hadn't heard of him uh, Dream has almost no sort of presence in 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 the U S you know Hell even me. with even with MMA fans I mean when when he uh, fought Hiroshi Izumi. At the Dream uh, Japan Grand Prix Final in July 2011, I don't think even the hardcore MMA fans were that worried about it. But uh, no, uh, Gegard's got a bunch of really tough fights on his record. Gustafson, you know, I I will give him a lot of credit for that win against Shogun. That was real, real pretty. But um, 
so you know so uh, so far i just i i i do think the Mahler will win i mean you will look at who he's beaten guys like Cyril Debate uh, Cyril Diabate, James Tejuna, Matt Hamill, Matt Yushenka, Tiago Silva, Mauricio Hua. Those are six talented fighters, and those are six fighters that Gustafson put away pretty handily. Mm-hmm. So a fight against Gegard, maybe even a rematch against your boy Phil Davis. Um, that would be <laughs> uh, that would that would be a a lot of fun. But I guess we'll move on. Um, Big news coming out of Ireland. Dana White was over in Ireland talking about buying everyone pints. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to. He was being given an award at some college in Ireland, giving a uh, little talk to a bunch of the students there, and fell ill with that mini ears syndrome. Unfortunately, I guess that surgery didn't take, which sucks ass for UFC fans, and especially Dana White. I'm sure that's got to be hell to live with. Um, but he did when he was in uh, Ireland, which uh, kind of overshadowed overshadowed that news unfortunately because I hate to to dwell on such shitty things Um, UFC 160 we're going to see the winners and the losers fight each other from 155 essentially we're going to see Cain Velasquez and Bigfoot Silva rematch in a heavyweight title uh, UFC 160 I believe that will be in May Um, and uh, you're going to see the people who lost to those fighters respectively uh, Junior Dos Santos and Alistair Overeem. We'll start with the first one, Velasquez versus Silva. Uh, Silva coming off that impressive KO against Overeem. Velasquez coming off the domination against J- JDS. Uh, we were talking about it on the round table. It was unanimous for Kane. I'm sure you're going with Kane. The point I kind of wanted to bring up is the fact that the Dos Santos Velasquez rematch could have gone either way because it was a flash KO, and anyone who possesses the power that Junior Dos Santos can or has can't end the fight with a flash KO like that. But in a fight like Velasquez Silva, Silva just raped, was uh, raped bell to bell by Kane. Kane was all over him, beat the living fuck out of him, and I don't see any way that uh, the outcome is any different from the first fight. Yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, that fucking first fight says it all, in my opinion. The, I mean, I remember that first fight, Kane versus Bigfoot Silva, like it was yesterday, because it practically was. The rematch is ridiculous to make at this point. I don't even see, like, even on a on a selling perspective, how this fight makes sense. It can't be a pay per view. I mean, come on, that's gonna be that's gonna be weak as hell. It's gonna have to be on free TV or something, right? I don't even know if it's already scheduled that way or not. But nobody's going to pay to see this shit again. Uh, but that being said, I do think somewhere in the back of my mind that Cain Velasquez, Cain Velasquez, he might fuck this up, man. He might just uh, do what Bigfoot did and what fucking, uh, who was it, Travis Brown did. Uh, they might get so fucking cocky that they'll overestimate or underestimate Bigfoot and get caught, man. I think Cain might actually make that mistake, given that he, you know, he destroyed him in the first fight. Uh, it was a fucking bloodbath. Uh, I predict this one will be as long as Cain Velasquez is fucking smart about it. Um, the problem is he doesn't strike me as a very smart man, though. So I guess we'll see about this one. I'll go either way. I just It depends on Cain's state of mind on this one. For sure, yeah. You know, it it, it, it is going to be a pay-per-view fight. UFC 160, the Jesus. MGM Grand Garden Arena, May 25th in Las Vegas, Nevada. Nobody's uh, going to buy that. UFC 160, Velasquez versus Bigfoot 2. I think it's going to be the first car in a while where people are going to be looking more forward to the co-main. Because honestly, the only reason why I was rooting for Junior Dos Santos and I was sad to see him lose was like, damn, I wanted to see him fight Alistair Overeem because that fight would have been tits. And uh, that fight's going to be tits because they're going to be fighting in the co-main. The, the, the Brazilian brawler, the boxer, Junior Dos Santos, against the Dutch kickboxer. It's the best boxer and the best kickboxer, not only in the heavyweight division, maybe in the entire UFC. I can't think of anyone out immediately. I mean, yeah, you have guys who are more uh, flurry boxers and put out a lot of volume, but as far as power boxing, Dos Santos is at the top. As far as power kickboxing, Alistair Overeem's at the top. And that fight is going to be a blockbuster. Um, 
And even though I want to pick Dos Santos after Overeem just looked so subpar against Silva, I mean, putting his hands down, I was, I, I was literally embarrassed as an Overeem fan to see him put his hands down. And what was it was the most quintessential, you know, you're talking about Kane maybe um, underestimating Silva. As far as one fighter underestimating another one and taking consequence from it. You see every now and then a fight from Alaska or Egypt, some backyard fight where a guy puts his hands down and taunts and then just gets knocked the fuck out. And it's hilarious because like, oh, karma, he was, you know, there's there is even a commercial for some stupid energy drink where some stupid Jamie Yeager looking like dudes jumping around and making a bunch of crazy moves and this, you know, guy just knocks him out, whatever. That's what yeah. we all want to see. But that was the closest, you know, as, as far as real life, big stage, UFC, um, one guy underestimating another and getting consequence from it. The first thing my mind goes to is Overeem putting his hands down against Silva. You can't, if, it, all right, you know, if if they were Bantamweights, go ahead, Overeem, put your hands down. You're in the heavyweight division, bro. I mean, I don't care how much you have disdain for Silva's striking. He's a big dude. And, you know, your <clears throat> that uh, little button in the back of your jaw that you can turn off and turn on, you know, you hear the uh, phrase, hit on the button, that's going to be the same whether you're a heavyweight or a flyweight. So you've got to be careful around these big dudes. But uh, no, I, I kind of went went on a tangent there. But as embarrassed as I was as an Overeem fan, I still am an Overeem fan. He has phenomenal kickboxing. Our our, our uh, buddy Chris kind of got got me on the Overeem bandwagon, and um, I I think I I like not not only his more diverse. We uh, talk about toolboxes. He has. This is definitely going to be a striking match. I don't see this going to to the uh, ground. Whether it's the clinch game or having more reach or have having the kicks, I think Overeem is going to uh, have a bigger toolbox to work with, and that's why I have him beating JDS. Yeah, I actually forgot that um, that this was going to be the co-main event: Dos Santos versus Overeem. So yeah, so yeah, now this card is a whole makes sense. Kind of saves it, yeah. Yeah, I'll actually, I'll actually buy this one just because of this fight, Kane versus Bigfoot. I probably won't even fucking watch it. Like, with there's both. gonna be, there's gonna be a lot more bad blood in this co-main too. I'm sure Kane and Bigfoot will have have their a typical. He knock me out, so I want <laughs> to get him. You know, that'll be you know typical. What what whatever, but uh, Overeem. T- Dos Santos, you're uh, gonna see a lot of back and forth. You're gonna see, hey, uh, I, I don't know. I was, I was about to try and break <laughs> out an Overeem impression. Me and Chris were actually chatting the other day, and we were doing the Overeem impression. And I think <laughs> Junior Dos Santos, I think he got his ass kicked by Kane, and I think his striking is one dimensional. And I think I have the phenomenal kickboxing, and I think I am doing horrible at this Overeem impression. <laughs> And I think Chris can do a lot better than me at it. But sorry, go ahead, Ramses, with what you were going to say about my uh, my fight against Junior Dos Santos. That wasn't that wasn't too bad, Alistar. Good to have you on the show. No, the problem. Uh, yeah, um, uh, your your the fight with Overeem and Dos Santos. Oh shit, man! It's gonna be like a. I mean, they're both coming off of like probably the worst performances. Uh, that we've that we've seen in recent uh, in their recent history, they both look like bums basically in their last fights. Uh, Overeem, it was like he was doing his he was fighting like he was a vintage rampage. All right, he was doing his rampage impression in that fight. Uh, so maybe uh, shit if he keeps that shit up, he's gonna be fighting rampage sooner or later in Bellator. Um, but this fight's pretty good. It's got me pumped. Uh, hopefully, they're both gonna just come out with like. Uh, wanting to fight for something other than the money, which is what it seemed like last time. Um, hopefully they're both going to come out wanting that fucking win. And uh, I think it'll be fight of the night. I don't see any reason why why it, why it isn't already a lock for it. So uh, as long as they live up to that, um, they'll both be back and everybody will fucking forget that they ever lost. They'll get a title shot next week or something. There's only five guys in that division. Yeah, it's kind of reminding me of the flyweight uh, 
division, you know, you have a guy lose a title fight and just the last, you know, the last couple guys to have a title fight fight each other and they, they get the next title fight. That's right. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a breath of, breath of fresh air having, uh, Cormier spruce up the heavyweight division. Obviously, Bigfoot's been a good addition. Uh, Barnett not, not coming in kind of sucks, but I don't think he, he, he would be French top 10. I don't think he would ever crack the top five, so I'm not that upset about it. Um, yeah, just, uh, Overeem and Dos Santos, you, I uh, think the winner of that's going to get the next title crack. Oof, shit. You have um, Big Nog versus Verdum, which is probably the other uh, logical one floating out there. Yeah, well, yeah, if I throw if I throw it in the air, something's going to stick. I mean, my chances are pretty good. There's only five guys in the division, so yeah, whoever wins, title shot. Title shot. Um, and don't forget to pick up Alistair Overeem's new stand-up comedy album, What's the Deal with All You Slack-Jawed Faggots. Uh, it's, there's, there's a giant picture of a horse on it. It's like him joking around. It's like a thought bubble on a horse. You can pick it up at Best Buy. Um, I wish I'd made that up because I did not. That is real. Um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> All right. <laughs> moving on. Uh, f- fight announcements, championship fight announcements. We had two this week. Cain Velasquez announced to defend his belt at UFC 60 against Silva. And Mighty Mouse is going to defend his belt against John Moraga at the Tough 17 finale on April 13th. I was hating on Moraga. I was saying uh, Mighty Mouse was putting people away, which obviously I don't mean literally. I think everyone kind of took it literally and was like, who is he put away? I, I mean put away as far as he dominated to a decision, which Dodson definitely got the closest to winning, but he dominated uh, McCall and Benavidez. Uh, and the two fights prior, um, I still think that Johnson should have been uh, docked a point for those two illegal blows, and it should have been a majority draw. But I'll uh, just let that one go to bed and forget about it. But Mighty Mouse is going to defend at the Tough 17 finale. John Moraga, uh, you think John Moraga has a chance in this one, or are we going to see another uh, Mighty Mouse championship defense in what is the UFC's weakest division? Look, did, did Literally fight. and figuratively, it's weak because you know they're small and because there's not a lot of fighters in it. See what I did there? I hear you, man. And along those lines, man, I, I did, fucking Mighty Mouse didn't he just uh, defend his title yesterday? I don't know. Yeah, what I think it was a couple hours about. ago. Yeah. Yeah, and and now what, what they're fighting him again? Jesus Christ! Um, they're at least I guess the word got out that everyone was like, "Hey, man, there's only five guys in this division," so they added a sixth guy. Uh, Moraga here. Um, does he have a chance? No, no. Hey, this guy is what coming straight off of the Facebook prelims. He's he, uh, he he has two UFC fights. He beat Ulysses Gomez. Uh, he uh, uh, both of those fights are actually within like the past six months. So you got to give the guy credit for fighting a lot. Uh, he fought Ulysses Gomez at UFC on Fox Five in August or four. Sorry, uh, won that fight via KO in the first round. And then fought Chris Carriasso uh, this past December. I'm looking up that fight now. UFC 155. That f- fight was wow. His <laughs> Jesus Christ. Are you 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 kidding me? Literally, his most recent fight was not only a Facebook fight. It was the first Facebook fight. Yeah, man. So he is he is going from the first Facebook fight of the entire card, literally what they've deemed to be the least important fight, to title shot. That's what I'm That's talking insane. about. That's man. insane. That's why I'm telling you. You just answered your own question. Does he have a chance? Come on, man. They're bowling this guy at the Mighty Mouse, dude. Mighty Mouse is just gonna fucking. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna pin you out of this guy, man. It's not even gonna be funny. Uh, Moraga. It ain't gonna happen, um, but the tough seventeen finale looking very much forward to that shit. Yeah, usually, you know, um at least of late when when the ultimate <laughs> fighter finales come up, I'm not much looking forward to the actual fights because the the contestants of the show are boring as hell. I'm more looking forward to, you know, the actual UFC fighters going against it. I feel like uh feel like this one's going to be a little bit bit opposite. People are going to be more looking forward to, to the contestants fighting. Um, 
than the actual uh, UFC title shot going down. It's a joke. Um, I do want to talk about Mighty Mouse real quick and whether he is the weakest UFC champion at the moment. But uh, really quick, we had a Twitter request from Susanna G. Thanks for tweeting in. And if you do feel like calling in any time, the number is uh, 213. Uh, it's not in front of me. I'm a retard. 213-457-3380. 213-457-3380. Or you can Skype us at the MMA Podcast, all one word. But Susanna G. wanted to know our thoughts on Anthony Pettis and his upcoming fights and his last one. Um, usually when, when we see a guy move weight classes, unless it's a champion like Anderson Silva, it's for the long term. Um, you know, I, if he is able to beat Joe, uh, Jose Aldo, he might hop back and forth, but I guess, you know, we, I got to think of him as a featherweight now that he's moving down to 145 and fighting Jose Aldo. Um, his last one, you know, it's, he did look absolutely incredible, but Donald Cerrone, it's, it's it's so weird because uh, Cerrone wins most of his fights, obviously, but his last two losses, he's not only lost, but he's gotten clowned by Pettis and Diaz. So it makes you sort of wonder whether I mean it was it was one one sided as hell. You saw clearly that Pettis was a much better fighter than Donald Cerrone, but I wonder whether that was because Cerrone just was like like his head wasn't in it. Or whether Diaz and Benson Henderson, or sorry, uh, Diaz and Anthony Pettis were just putting on amazing, you know, career fights there. It's, uh, I don't know. Uh, what do you think about Pettis and his uh, fight against Cerrone and his fights up upcoming, man? Anthony Pettis, fucking Showtime, man. He is just operating on a different level that just Donald Cerrone could not even understand. All right. Um, don't, don't. It's like a dog looking at an iPad. You just don't know what's going on when you look yeah. at it. Yeah. Have you ever seen that uh, viral uh, video where um, the guy, it's like this black guy, he, he's in some kind of karate dojo. He thinks he knows karate and he challenges like the, the guy in the dojo to a fight. It's like in, from the 90s or something. Oh, I think so. And he like almost looks like a homeless dude and like doesn't like... He literally get killed or something. Yeah, he gets the shit knocked. He gets knocked out, and then after he's knocked out, like the guy drag just, him outside. Yeah, they stomp on his head a few times first. Um, so yeah. you're like, this guy's dead, and then they carry his body outside, throw him out in the alley. Who knows if he lived or I don't know what the story is. But so that, that guy, was basically Pettis Cerrone. <laughs> yep yeah, that 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 was the cowboy. All right, he got dragged out by Showtime. All right. He showed, fucking the cowboy showed up in Anthony Pettis' dojo, and he left out the back door. All right, he left as Holy human shit. human garbage. That's what that fight was. It was ridiculous. Right now, as a, as we speak, I'm watching on Fuel TV uh, Cerrone's fight versus Jeremy Stevens. What happened to that cowboy? Uh, or what? He's just fighting a bar brawler, basically. That's that's the difference. When he goes up against a pro, you you see what happens. You saw what happened. Even Nick D, even Nick Diaz whooped his ass, made him look like a white belt. It was embarrassing. Um, so uh, did what was Susanna's other question about uh, Pettis versus and his Aldo fights up upcoming? Yeah, um, we uh, talked a little bit about it last week. Definitely, Susanna. We're on YouTube and iTunes. Uh, you can just go to the MMA click the tabs at the top to subscribe on either one. Listen to last week's show. We we uh, broke it down a little bit, but uh, we don't mind talking about it again real quick. I think we uh, both talked about our thoughts on Aldo versus Pettis. Yeah, let's just – I'll just put it this way for you, Susan, and uh, I love you. Um, I love you too. Let, let's say that Cowboy Cerrone on the fighting scale is in – is a 7.5 or an 8. Jose Aldo is like a 9 or a 10. Anthony Showtime Pettis is an 11. You understand me? These guys aren't going to know what hit him. He's just on another level. The the the, the fucking level that that you only go to like you only see it like what? One in every thousand fighters maybe. Maybe that's if you're lucky you see it. And uh I believe in this kid. He's going to fuck some shit up. Word on the street. Yeah, I uh, think he and Aldo are so, so similar. Uh, they have crazy kicks. They have uh, good ground games. I, you know, I really think they're going to neutralize one another in a lot of aspects. And 
the reason I'm picking Pettis and Pettis versus Aldo, I think they're going to neutralize each other a lot. I think both of them, you know, leg kicks, I think they'll neutralize each other. Head kicks, they'll neutralize each other. Boxing, neutralize. Clinch, ground game, speed, strength. They're so similar in so many different categories, except one, gas tank. Gas tank. Who is the one that fa- that kind of fails in rounds three, four, and five, especially four and five, especially round five? Jose Aldo. Who is the one who shines later in rounds? Who stole a decision from Benson Henderson from literally jetting, jettison, jettisoning himself off of the cage into what became a move named after himself? That's Showtime Pettis, and I think Show. Show, uh, Showtime will win. I think rounds one and two and possibly three will be a grab bag. But rounds maybe three, definitely four and five, those will go to Pettis. And I see it go into a decision uh, just because both of them are fucking made out of iron. They have granite chins. I agree with that 100%. And once again, Suzanne or Susan, whatever your name was, I love you. And... uh yeah, I also wish I could have taken you out on a Valentine's Day date and bought you, like, lobster or crab or, like, pork if you're not into seafood. And then yeah. brought you home and said goodnight because I'm a gentleman and I'm not going to get creepy because you're listening right now because you just tweeted in. All right. Uh, um, real, re- Those real was quick. jokes. Those is jokes. We got no, jokes and jokes. Oh, we just lost a listener. Damn it. Um, Damn. Unsolved Mysteries. You uh, ready to uh, get get into this week's edition? Hit it, man. This week on Unsolved Mysteries, MMA Podcast Edition. Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. We all know he fights in the weakest division in the UFC, the Flyweight Division. There are literally five fighters in the flyweight division. And everyone has gotten three title shots so far. Mighty Mouse has defended his belt two times now. Oh, wait, one time now against John Dodson. But when you look at every champion in the UFC right now, and there are ten of them, is he the weakest champion in the UFC? I will look at all ten champions. Cain Velasquez, definitely better champion. John Jones, Anderson Silva, George St. Pierre, I don't even need to go over those three. Benson Henderson, yes. Jose Aldo, obviously, yes. Dominic Cruz, yes. He even beat Demetrius Johnson. Henan Barrow, again, yes. Ronda Rousey, no questions there. I think Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson is the weakest champion in the UFC. Ramses, what do you think? Well, let me just break it down for you here. I've got to say, Mighty Mouse, on the surface, it appears that he might be the weakest link. He might be the weakest champion in the UFC. But the reality is, there's a mystery going on here. We have a case of missing champions here. We have have people that are holding the belt in the UFC that uh, are nowhere to be found. Take, for instance, Dominic Cruz. He's supposedly the champion. Where is he? He's not taking fights. When was the last time he had a fight? When was the last time you heard from Dominic Cruz? He's missing in action. Yeah, they're claiming injury, but uh, the circumstances surrounding it all are, are, uh, are really fishy here. I suspect a conspiracy. I, th- I think uh, Cruz is in someone's uh, the trunk of someone's car right now. Maybe Lorenzo's. Um, and also, you got Ronda Rousey. Supposedly she's the fucking uh, hurt my throat. Supposedly she's the fucking champion of the women's division. Yet how can she be the champion when there's never even been a fight in the women's division? It's a goddamn unsolved mystery. Tune in next time. If you or anybody you know know who the weakest champion in the UFC is, please contact local law enforcement. Or you can call us or mail us at P.O. Box. 112, Hollywood, California. 2 2. Alright, that joke's played out. Alright, we will move on. UFC <laughs> on Fuel 7 preview. Clear your throat. We're done doing that ridiculous voice. Yeah. Um, I actually kind of want to go go through all of the uh, fights on the main card. I know, know there's uh, five of them, or six of them, 
But um, this is, I think, really top to bottom when you look at main cards. This is the most stacked UFC on fuel we've uh, we've ever had. Really, you think so? UFC on fuel? Uh, let's see. All no. all six fights interest me, which is something I, I I can't remember saying about any other fuel car. Well, I got to say, uh, maybe six fighters interest me, but I guess so by default the fights do. But I don't think I've, I think we've seen better fuel cards. I just off the top of my head, I can't remember. So I'll give this one to you. Shazam! And uh, I guess we'll start from the top to the bottom uh, to keep y'all listening until the very end, and we will end it with this preview and then send it off. Um, we'll start with the welterweights: Che Mills versus Matt Riddle. Um, both of them, you know, Mills is obviously, this is your stand-up versus wrestler matchup. Mills is a very good boxer. Riddle has been known to want to engage with guys in fights, but he's been fighting more intelligently lately, uh, really imposing his wrestling, and he does have, uh, does have better wrestling than the Brit, the butter-toothed Brit, Che Mills. Um, Riddle's going to be going going in in front of that British crowd, so I'm sure there's going to be, uh, you know, if, if uh, Darren Crookshank thinks he's uh, thinks he's hated on Canada, he doesn't know anything about Riddle and England and Riddle in England after calling them all butter toothed Brits. But I do see Riddle taking down Mills without a problem, ground and pound. Um, I mean, you 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 you. You want to talk about ground and pound. Literally the most vicious ground and pound I've ever seen is that Riddle tough knockout. But, um, yeah, I have uh, Riddle in this one either via TKO ground and pound or decision. Yeah, I also have Riddle. Um, this Riddle's just a word on the street. He's been blazing that Jay. He's been watching fight tapes, and he's been figuring out the UFC game lately. Uh, Shay Mills, man. Oh man, he maybe he'll clip Riddle, uh, but even then, it's gonna you have to clip Riddle a few times for for it to get through his fucking thick skull, man. That guy doesn't give a fuck if if he's rocked or not, man. He's still gonna fucking hit you. Um, so yeah, I, I am giving it to Riddle. He is coming along. He's putting it all together. Um, I'm actually gonna bet this one. I'm gonna bet on Matt Riddle. That's how confident I am when I'm staying away from most of the other fights. I was actually just about to say I don't talk about lines and betting too much, um, but I was I was looking at at, at the lines just because I'm always curious what Vegas has to say. Riddle's an underdog. Riddle's plus one thirty five, plus one fifty five on some sites. Um, yeah, and Che Che Mills is minus one ninety, so definitely uh, get a little bit of action on that. And yeah. I will move on. At the request of my co-host, uh, a light heavyweight bout, which, you know, talking about bets, I really think the last one and this one are the two that I would look at. Um, James Tejuno versus Ryan Jimmo. You have Jimmo, who's a big underdog. Another guy, for some reason, I don't know why they aren't giving him more of a chance. Jimmo is on a crazy, like, 19-fight win streak from the MFC. Just came off a seven-second knockout of Anthony Paroche. Obviously, James Tahuna is going to be a better striker than Paroche, uh, more aggressive guy than Paroche. He's going to be harder to knock out, but uh, Jimmo's a man possessed. He's training down with the Black Zillions in Miami. you got to love a guy who's come on our show. He's from Florida, uh, checks out, and I can't, can't go against him in this one. Yep, once again, I'm backing you on this one, and this is the only other fight that I'm going to bet on. Ryan Jimmo, the underdog, how the fuck did that ever get worked out with the bookies? Hats off to you guys, because I'm about to fucking make a pretty penny on this bitch. Everyone, man, drop a dime on Ryan Jimmo. It's going to be a great fucking fight. This guy hasn't had a chance to shine except for those seven seconds of fame, you know? It's time to extend that, all right? Let's give him the whole 15 minutes right here, all three. Well, it probably ain't going to go three rounds. But you know what I mean. It's time for his 15 minutes of possible fame. Uh, Ryan Jimmo, all the fucking way. All the way. Um, and I guess that'll br- briskly take us to the third of six, where he have, we have uh, the middleweights, Gunnar Nelson, or sorry, the welterweights, Gunnar Nelson and uh, Jorge George. Whenever they spell it J-O-R-G-E, I was like, Jorge George, how do I say it? Eh. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to say Jorge because it starts with a J. Uh, Jorge Santiago, uh, Gunnar Nilsson, one of the most talked about welterweight prospects now, a submission king, 
uh, in his last 10 fights. Only one fight has gone outside of the first round. They've all been wins for Nelson. Uh, all of them, except for a few, have been submissions. Uh, his last five fights, all first round submission victories. Uh, his last fight was his UFC debut against Demarcus Johnson. First round rear naked choke. That was back in September at UFC on Fuel. Uh, Struve versus Miocic. Uh, yeah, he he looks really incredible. Um, looking at the other side of the octagon, he got Jorge Santiago. Uh, you know, he's, he's a guy, I, I love, love these stylistic matchups. He's, he's a guy who's never been submitted. So you have this, the submission master against a guy who has submitted himself 13 people. It's the most, uh, most frequent way he's won. He's never been, been submitted. Both of these guys are monsters. They're both black belts in Brazilian jiu-jitsu, um, Nelson fighting, I believe, with Team Henzo Gracie, Jorge Santiago fighting with the Black Dil- Black Dillions, Black Zillions down in Florida. I think it's going to be really close, but uh, you know Nelson is the more talked about guy, just mainly because he's got an impressive record and hasn't lost yet in the UFC. We saw Jorge Santiago lose to Brian Stan and Damian Maya uh, before leaving for Titan FC, and now he's back after a couple wins over there. Um, I think it'll be close. I think Santiago has a chance, but I still got Gunner. Gunner Nelson, man. Again, we're lining up here, dude. Gunner Nelson is the scariest son of a bitch in the UFC to me right now. You look into his eyes, man. There's nothing there, man. It's all just cold, dead blackness. He, this guy, he, he has some fucking skeletons in the closet. He's probably killed a few men before. That's the word on the street, all right? You know how in the Unsolved Mysteries segment I was saying uh, Dominic Cruz was missing in the trunk of somebody's car? Yeah, it's probably Gunnar Nelson's fucking car, man. He's fucking definitely put some kills under his belt, man. This guy is a killer. He is going to run over Jorge Santiago easily. Uh, it's going to be another fucking impressive uh, exhibition by Gunnar, man. This guy is a... Uh, I don't see anybody beating him right now. Um, you know, uh, yeah, honestly, I don't see anybody right now so he's on his way to the top uh maybe three four more fights yeah you know i i think gunner's got got a long way to go too but i do think when he gets up in that welterweight elite of your campman's allen burgers uh hendrix you know god you have such a stacked welterweight division it's the most stacked division in the ufc now i i i really like nelson but to be quite honest i don't even see him cracking the top 10 yeah, well, r- shit. Give it like a year, maybe. If we're talking twenty, if we're talking yeah, twenty fourteen, yeah. he- he'll be in the top ten definitely. Like I said, he's three or four wins away, um, but he'll get there. There's no doubt in my mind about that because I don't see anybody beating him on the level he's competing at right now in the UFC, and that's a high level just being in the UFC. For sure, for sure. Yeah, we were talking about Gunner um, in his UFC debut fighting Demarcus Johnson on that UFC on Fuel 5, Strew vs. Miocic card at the end of last September. Uh, really, the thing that stood out to me more than anything else in that card was that beatdown of Kyle Kingsbury by Jimmy, the poster boy, Manua, and he is returning on this card, uh, going to be facing the big light heavyweight Cyril Diabate. You know, you're... Uh, you were talking about Gunner as 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 one of the last guys you would want to be facing now in the UFC. Jimmy Manoa, I'll I'll let Gunner snap my limbs all day. Jimmy Manoa is is gonna rearrange your face if you give him a few seconds to. Manoa looked absolutely as our boy Ray from the round table would say, he looked absolutely brilliant. Yep. And yeah, he he looked you know he's. Dude's dude's twelve and zero has just about as as impressive as a record as uh, Gunner in that every single one of his fights are first or second round KO or TKO victories, except for the one time Jimmy Manoa decided to guillotine that fool in 09. 
um, defended his UCMMA light heavyweight championship five times before moving on to Bama for a fight and now joining the UFC. Just, I, you know, Cyril Diabate, I do think he's a really good fighter and I don't want to take any credit away from him. He he had awesome fights against Tom De, DeBlas and Chad Griggs, uh, especially that Griggs fight where he, he rear naked choked him in the first round. That was an impressive fight. I was, I was... I picked Mutton Chops to win it, and I was proven wrong. But, um, Cyril Diabata, you know, bro, you lost to Anthony Paroche, and you think you're going to get by Jimmy Manoa, the dude who, I mean, Kyle Kingsbury is one of the toughest guys in the UFC, and Jimmy Manoa, I mean, he he literally almost pushed him to the point of death, I want to say. He he would have, like, if, if, if the doctors would have let that fight go on, I think Kyle Kingsbury would have fought to the, to the death, and Jimmy Manuel would have killed him, and it would have been the first death inside of the octagon. I'm not talking about at the hospital the next day because of concussion damage. I'm talking about a death inside the octagon. Um, yeah, Jimmy Manuel was a beast, and he's going to run away with his first round knockout. You're on a roll, son, because I'm also going with Jimmy Manoa. And also, I do predict the first round KO. I don't even know that much about Cyril Diabate, man. All I know is he's fighting Jimmy Manoa. And uh, that's not a good fucking thing. That's going to end in a goddamn knockout. Uh, Hands down, uh, Manoa, he looked uh, really impressive also. Uh, I I heard some some, uh, hype about him before his debut. So I put a little money down, and I'm happy with uh, with the turnout. Made a little coin on that son of a bitch. And also, I've talked to him on Twitter a little bit. I'm not going to lie. So for that reason alone, I've got his back. He seems like a nice guy um, and pretty focused. Uh, you know, he's, he, you know, shit. Um, I'll, I'll maybe put a little bit of money down on this one. But, um, you know, uh, shh, goddamn. Now I'm starting to bet a little too much here. Uh, but it is, I think this one's going to be closer than we think, though. I'll end with that. Closer than we think, actually. Yeah, um, our 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 first two picks were uh, upsets in Riddle and Jimmo, but our last two guys, Gunnar Nelson and Jimmy Manoa, are favored pretty heavily in Las Vegas. Nelson a minus two seventy, and Manoa a minus two thirty five uh, favorite in the books. This next fight is about as even as it can get. Both dudes minus one ten. They had a dope stare down today. They looked mad. They looked mean. Cub Swanson and Dustin Poyer facing off in a featherweight fight. Uh for some reason they're only ranked sixth and seventh in the official rankings. Uh I think both of them are top five and I think, you know, obviously the winner will be in the top five after this fight. Um just just both of them really really are you know, I'm talking about toolboxes before and having different ways you can attack your opponent. Both of them have pretty big toolboxes. Uh, Poyer, obviously, he's 6-1 in his last seven fights, all of them in Zufa, the only loss to Korean Zombie by Doris, and he roared back in the fight after to, to defeat Jonathan Brookins by Doris. Uh, Swanson is on a three-fight win streak, defeated Root Pearson and, and Charles Oliveira. Just, I mean, just just looking at the way guys evolve. Cub Swanson, if 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 the Cub Swanson of 2013 would have fought the Cub Swanson that lost to Jose Aldo in 09 by double flying knee, I think the 2013 Cub would probably knock that Cub out in eight seconds too. This is an evolved, evolved Cub Swanson. He looks awesome. Those, I mean, his last three fights, all knockouts are TKOs. He's throwing heavy hands. I know Dustin Poirier has never been uh, finished, uh, or, or you know, his uh, only losses are, are decision and technical knockout, or, uh, or technical submission, sorry, so he's never been knocked out, never TKO'd, never tapped. Um, but I think we're uh, going to see Dustin get stopped. I got Cub Swanson. You know what? I'm going to go on, out on a big limb here. Cub Swanson, first round KO. Look, man, this is the one fight that you got to stay away from, especially if you got money on your pockets and you like to gamble, all right? This this fucking fight, Cub Swanson and Dustin, man, the diamond dude. I, oh, man, you'd be a fool to try to bet on this one. You wouldn't be making a smart bet. You'd just be gambling. All right, you just be gambling. You might as well put that shit on blackjack or slot machine or I totally agree. 
Both of right. these guys are so aggressive and they take so many chances. Either could win at any point. Yep, and that's why like I'm just going to sit back and just watch this one for the fun of it. Once you put money down, I know you're not a gambler, Jake, but once you put money down on this shit, like, y- you know, it's it, you don't have fun just watching it. And this is one of these fights that you just want to watch, so I'm not even going to fucking make a call. Um, I'll fucking flip a coin here. One second. There we go. Heads. Swanson is heads. Yeah, it's heads. Uh, so Bam, I'll go Cubs Swan, one. Swanson will yep. win. Yeah, you, uh, you, you uh, know my uh, story about Chael, Chael Son and uh, bringing me away from the gambling game, right? No, what the, what the fuck happened? Yeah, yeah, this is actually uh, back in the day. This is back, I guess, 09, 2010. Shit. I, I, you know, I wasn't a crazy gambler, but I think in the course of maybe three or four months, I put down couple hundred a few hundred bucks i put 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 down a little bit of action i think i bet like a hundred bucks in the national title game i I was actually had a winning uh, streak i uh, bet on benson in that rematch against cerrone um or maybe it was the fight against varner i can't can't forget now but anyway um the last bet i put down on at a sports book I put fifty dollars in what I thought was gonna be a lock. I thought for sure I, w- I was a little, you know, get getting a little tight. I, I, you know, it uh, wasn't like the uh, fifty dollars was rent money or anything. It was, yeah. it, w- it was money I could lose, but it hurt if I lost it. Right. Um. And my boy Nate Marcourt, I put fifty down. Yo, he's he's fighting this Chael Sonnen chump. Who is Chael Sonnen? I don't know who the fuck Chael Sonnen is, man. Marquardt is a beast. He's roaring back for that title shot. I've I've always been a fan of uh, Marquardt. Um, and then I watched that fight, and I put fifty bucks down on it. And uh, it was an Ooh. agonizing fifteen minutes just watching Marquardt. Literally for fifteen minutes, he had no options other than sit on his ass and get punched in the face. There was nothing he 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 could do. Um, it, it, it actually, even though I bet against him and lost money because of it, it made me a Sonnen fan a little bit because I was like, wow, he absolutely just negated anything Marquardt had. And I thought after the uh, fight, you know, it, it uh, wasn't like I lost, lost money. I was like, no, and that's, that's why I stopped. But, but, but the fight, fight, fight ends. I was like, shit, I lost that 50 bucks. Damn it. And I was like, you know what? I thought there was absolutely zero chance I lost that fifty bucks, and instead, I think it may have been like a parlay where I put one or two other bets down too, and I would have gotten like two hundred bucks back if they had all gone through. Something crazy. But I thought, I thought this was the biggest lock of them all, and it went the exact opposite way. This is just, I, mm-hmm. I. I can't do it, you know. This is like was my lock, and I just saw Marquardt get absolutely handled. So, eh, you know what? I'll just enjoy the sport and not lose any money because of it. But uh, yeah, it's yeah, always yeah. Fun. I, I wish I could say I feel sorry for you, but I don't, man. Honestly, that's what you get for betting against the Westland Warrior, the People's Champion, Chael Sonnen. All right. <laughs> I'm 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 almost wishing I wish you had lost almost everything everything that you own. Um <laughs> just so you would have just so you would have benefited a little bit more from the experience, all right? You don't bet against Chael Sonnen ever, man. Team Sonnen, Team Darkside representing right here. Word on the street. Sorry, Jake, about your fifty bucks. Yo, I uh, think if if anything, Chael Chael won that, that fight just to uh get me to stop gambling so thank you chael you are an awesome dude and uh looking forward to seeing you fight john jones yo let's uh let, we've uh talked about gambling the co-main event we haven't gotten to the main event yet looking like the timing's about perfect we're just about exactly two hours in uh the main event hennen Burrell versus michael mcdonald not the singer the young elite bantamweight contender who's coming up going to be fighting the interim champion the Brazilian Henan Barrow on a 29 fight win streak. Uh, Michael McDonald, a heavy underdog as Henan Barrow. Um, a lot of people want to see Barrow versus Cruz as far and away. A lot of people think they're the top two bantamweights in the world. Uh, really quick though, before we uh, break it down, you're, there's, there's a, a little friendship 
between Michael uh, Mayday McDonald and the Word on the Street podcast, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yeah, basically, um, long ago, I predicted that uh, McDonald was headed for the title and that he is going to win it uh, tomorrow night. I predicted that a long time ago, you know, and just when, you know, when people didn't even know who the fuck Michael McDonald was. So I was, you know, just tweeting him every now and then, you know, just, you know, telling him, you know, I know you're going to be the champ, you know, because I I have some sort of gift here, all right? Sometimes I I get this feeling about certain fighters, man. I just know when they, when they have that, you know, Apollo Creed said it best in the Rocky movies, the eye of the tiger. I can see that in some fighters. Michael McDonald has it. It is my belief that he is going to decimate tomorrow. And I've said that to him on, on numerous occasions before the fight was even made. Before, you know, I, I predicted that he's, that this is going to happen tomorrow. And I, I gotta say, it's all coming together. I don't see any reason why it's going to fall apart. Mayday McDonald is going to be your new champion. And uh, hopefully I'll get an interview with him. Yeah, you know, I, I really haven't been following his, uh, training at all. I, uh, know he's, 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 he's from California, uh, trains with Oakdale MMA, not necessarily the most well-known camp out there. Brown Belt and BJJ, uh, pretty good kickboxer. Um, you know, guy guy won his last two fights uh, against Alex Soto and Miguel Torres by KO in the first round. Um, he's only had about one fight in the last year, that uh, Torres fight. He fought Soto in November 2011, Torres April 2012. Now he's got the interim Bantamweight Championship coming up. Um, do you know anything about, about his training camp and what he's doing to get ready for uh, Barrow? Or, you know, I hate hate to put, put you on the spot like, like, like mm-hmm. this, but uh, you uh, know anything he's doing? Uh, as far as I know, his training is kind of like uh, the equivalent of being homeschooled. He's kind of he's kind of doing it himself there with his uh, with his brothers. Um, they're, they're also fighters and shit too. Um, so that's basically his training there. He just fucking sits there fighting his fucking brothers every day, um, and they're pretty fucking good and they're different sizes. Uh, so you know, other than that, I don't know that much about it. But uh, I just know that he's fucking got he's got more he's got more in the bag than people are giving him credit for. And Hennon Burrell's not going to even fucking know what's hitting them, man. That, sh- that spinning shit, it ain't going to work on on Mayday, dude. It ain't going to work. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. And just for the sake of letting you you, you know, I currently have a Michael Mc- McDonald song going uh, going <laughs> uh, sort of quietly in the background. But, uh, yeah, I, you know, I... I I do agree. I don't think people are giving Michael McDonald the the kind of respect he warrants. You know, the guy's 15 and one, and it's not because he's lucky. He's beaten you know some of the top top uh, guys in his uh, division. You know, beat uh, Carriasso, Soto, and Torres. Which I don't know about Soto. Dude doesn't even have a Wikipedia page. But uh, you know, his last fight against Torres, he he knocked dude out of the UFC. Um, but I, I just, I've, I've been a huge fan of Barrow even before he joined the UFC. I actually had, uh, Barrow on my top pound for pound list like two years ago or something. I'm, I'm a big believer in, in him and Barrow and it isn't a knock against guys like, like, uh, Barrow, uh, or sorry, guys like McDonald, but I just think Barrow's an absolute monster. I, I, I don't see how... McDonald. I mean, yeah, you know, he, he, he throws. I mean, you know, he's he 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 throws more accurate strikes, but he doesn't throw as many strikes. He's gonna have the puncher's chance, but as the fight wears through, Barrow, just like his buddy at Nova Uniao Josie Aldo, proficient with those leg kicks, and and if he doesn't get through. You know, uh, through Barrow's range in the first round or two to get that KO, I don't see how how he does it after Barrow's been chopping away at those legs for a little while. Nah, man, look, Hen and Barrow, dude, uh, he's gonna he's gonna be fucking coming from halfway across the world, the longer distance. There, he's not gonna know what's happening. He's not gonna understand what anybody's saying to him. All these people speaking English and the king's English. He's, he's not going to know whether he's coming or going, all right? That's working against him already. Michael McDonald, he doesn't give a fuck who he's fighting, when and where. Uh, Hen- Barrow is going to be a tough opponent. I'm not selling him short. This is going to fucking, I believe it probably will go fucking five rounds if it has to. But 
Um, fucking Mayday, dude. It's going to be a shock to Hen and Barat once he gets hit with that fucking power. Like, people don't even remember Mayday's power, man. He is underestimated. Flying under the he weight. He has an incredible right hand. His his right right hand is maybe the scariest one hit, you know, one punch in the Bantamweight division. Yep, and he's got a good setup for it, man. He's got good setups, dude. And uh, that's something you don't see people hitting Hen and Burrell with too often. Um, so I think he's... Uh, uh, fuck, man. It's going to be a hell of a fucking fight. I'm still back in my man, Michael Mayday McDonald. I think he's going to pull out some shit we haven't seen him do. Yeah, you know, I mean, if if it's standing, I I I I do like Michael, and just because he's the underdog, I'm going to be be rooting for him. Um, just whether it's standing or on on the uh, ground game, I I don't see Barrow letting him in close enough to let loose a barrage of punches, get get that set up in for the right hand, and even if Michael Mc, McDonald wanted to to use his uh, jiu-jitsu, use his wrestling, I mean, Barrow, look at the last two dudes he fought in your eye, Faber and Scott Jorgensen, two top wrestlers, it's just... I, I, I'm having a hard time. I'm, I mean, don't, don't get, get, get me wrong. I am rooting for Mayday, but I'm just having a hard time coming up with a way he could win other than just by a, by a lucky right hand. Oh man, you're not giving him credit, dude. He's a squirrely motherfucker in the cage, dude. He'll get, he'll get to where he needs to. Um, you know, it's Hannibal Rao, you know, it's not like he's untouchable. He can be he can be hit um, and he can be caught. Uh, the problem is no one's ever caught him with power, and uh, Mayday's going to do it, man. It's I think I think it's I think it's going to be shocking almost what you see. You know I I think to get that punch in it's going to need to be a counter. I don't don't think Mayday is going to be able to just march right right up and land a strike. You know I mean. Uh, Barrow is better than almost anyone out. I mean, you uh, look at these strikers like Silva, Barrow, and Aldo, who I really believe are in a league of their own. Silva, Barrow, and Aldo are just in the matrix at their their uh, divisions. Their uh, striking is not only effective because it damages the opponent a lot, it's super effective because it controls distance. And it, it maintains the pace and distance that the entire fight's going to be fought at. And all three of these guys really are 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 the generals when it comes to how how far away your opponent's gonna be. I mean, uh, Barrow really. I mean, the the leg kicks, the jabs, the combinations. He 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 just keeps you at bay. Um, and yeah, he um, Mayday is a good counter striker, but he's gonna need to start getting into exchanges with uh, Barrow if he's going to be getting Barrow comfortable enough to leap in and make an opening for Mayday to jump in. I'm just, uh, you know, I I think we both will agree that Michael McDonald is going to need the finest performance of his his career to win. And even though he might get it, I still just, and then Barrow is such a beast. I just, you know, I... <laughs> I uh, picked against Jose Aldo, even though in the back of my head I was like, "How are you picking it against Aldo Silva or Barrow ever?" And uh, you know, until any of them lose, I don't think I'm going to pick against Barrow, Aldo, or Silva ever. They're just that dominant. Unless Silva goes up against Sonnen in the in the the uh, tri trifecta fight, obviously. Yes. But um, yeah, I just i i can't I can't do it, man. I wish I was as brave as you, but I can't give it to Mayday. Well, you're you're, you're just gonna see that I'm right, man. I have we'll seen have this. To disagree. I have foreseen this moment. Mayday, McDonald, belt tomorrow. Belt tomorrow. Tune in. Um, I'm looking right now. It's a. Uh, it's it's a little bit squirrely as far as the start time. Um, it is in the UK. I believe the Facebook prelims start at like noon Eastern. Something like that, man. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I'm uh, looking now. The Facebook prelims, which will be 
Um, was it really? Oh, wait, it's Facebook and then Fuel. What? That doesn't yep. make any sense. Wow. That's all she half, wrote. half of it's on Facebook and the other half's on Fuel. That's insane. Yep. Uh, so the first half of the card that's going to be on Facebook at twelve fifteen p.m. Eastern. That's five fifteen p.m. UK. That's nine fifteen a.m. For you Cali listeners on the West Coast, wake up early to watch that. You got Paul Sass, Danny Castillo, Terry Adam versus Renee Forte, Andy Ogle versus Josh Grisby, Phil Day, Phil Harris versus Ulysses Gomez, Vaughn Lee versus Monotobu Tezuka, and Tom Watson versus Stanislav Nedkov. Uh, the first fighter in all those matchups being the hometown butter toothed Brit. Um, and then the Fuel TV, the main card, including all six fights we just broke down, that'll be 3 p.m. Eastern, 8 UK, noon Pacific on Fuel TV. Uh, if you don't have Fuel TV, uh, don't watch an illegal stream because we definitely wouldn't ever promote anything as heinous as ever doing that, ever, ever. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, unless you got anything out else, uh, we're ready to send it off. Uh, big shout out to our listeners. Always doing us good. I'm always taken aback when I see our YouTube comments, which I expected from day one to just be cunty, cunty, cunty. We we somehow get positive YouTube comments. I don't know how that's happened. Uh, subscribe on YouTube, and you can find the tab for that on the mmapodcast.com, along with the tab to go get us on iTunes. Uh, I try really hard to keep that as a, updated as quick as possible once the episodes end. We'll have this on iTunes literally in about 10 minutes. And we'll have it up on YouTube maybe in an hour or two. That whole process takes a little bit longer. Uh, but yeah, listeners, you guys are some cool motherfuckers. And follow us on Twitter, obviously, at the MA Podcast. Um, tweet us, chat some MA with us, do whatever. Who the fuck cares? Um, so yeah, uh, this show is every Friday, 9 to 11 Eastern, 6 to 8 Pacific. The Round Table every Thursday, 7 to 9 Eastern, 4 to, P- 4 to 6 Pacific, with myself, Ramsey's. Chris, who's actually in Kenya right now, whittling chairs and other wooden figures. Um, all of us are on that. Uh, we have a lot of fun doing that. Yo, Ramsey's word on the street. What's going on with that podcast? Follow that cool motherfucker on Twitter at the Ant Jimmy Show. T H E A N T J I M M Y S H O W. What's going on with word on the street? Yeah, listen, people. If you're out there and you feel like you fucked up in life and there's nothing left. You know, you're at your wits end there. Maybe, you know, maybe you fucked up your life. Like, maybe you got married. Maybe you had kids or something. Maybe you hit somebody, you know, coming back from the bar. It was a hit and run. You killed somebody. I don't know. If you're sick of your life right now, what you want to do is follow me on Twitter, the Aunt Jimmy Show on Twitter. Follow me, and your life will be changed. Everything will turn around. Your problems will go away, I swear, in the name of whatever God... Vitor Armstrong believes and follow me on Twitter. That's the word on the street. Word on the fucking street. Yeah, Ramses, you are a fun as fuck guest host to have on. I'm sure everybody who listens to the show enjoys it as much as I do. Uh, we really appreciate you filling in as long as you, uh, as long as you've you've got the uh, time. You know, we we always love having you on um, with Chris on his little sabbatical. Uh, yo, this is going to be a dope card this Saturday. Looking forward to watching it, breaking it down next week. Uh, we'll be back next Thursday and Friday for the Roundtable and the MMA Podcast. And until then, uh, thanks again for tuning in. For Ramses, I'm Jake. We gone. Back in the day when I was learning to rock in this mic Paying homage to the classic shit Dilated on this beautiful heavyweights Reppin' Los Angeles <laughs>